Thanks for tuning in to The Decision Reel, where we try to review movies of today and yesterday, but as always, it descends into madness. I am your host, Steve. With me as I try to steer this sinking ship this week are Randy and Wally, uh, but here's the, the kicker. They're not actually here. They're on remote locations today. We all got COVID from kissing each other. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that what we're going with? <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> That's where your heart's at. <laughs> So says some people, apparently. But mm -hmm. the the ship, as we talked about, sails on, and we will try our best to do this over the intranets uh, and get you the best episode that we possibly can't do. Dinner yes. with. <laughs> yeah. uh, before we get too deep into this review, I do want to say, if you are a frequent listener or a first-time listener or anything like that, and you end up liking what you hear... Uh, please take 10 seconds out of your day and share any one of our social media posts or liking any one of our social media pages. Uh, maybe give us a review on like Apple Podcasts or if you're watching on YouTube, give us a like and a subscribe, something like that. Randy, where can you find us on social media? You can probably find us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook um, at The Decision Reel at The Decision Reel. You can also find us on yeah. our website at www.thedecisionreel.com. There you can find our merch tab. We have t-shirts for sale there. That is the only way you can support us uh, physically by buying our t-shirts and giving us money and helping us with the show. Uh, you can support us uh, virtually, I guess, by liking anything or following us on our social medias like we said. Okay. okay. TheDecisionReel.com why aren't you popping up? There it is. Look at him trying to, there it is. to go in the actual I I spelled, websites. I spelled a word wrong. I am. Spelled a, this Ooh, guy spelled look it. at that. What do you see there, Randy? <laughs> I, I see a, a lot. A lot. There's a lot going on. This is the first time <laughs> my man's ever been to our website. That's uh, There's a lot of logos. I don't know what any of them mean. So each of those logos will take you to a different podcasting uh, website or hosting service that we are on. So if you want to listen to us on a podcasting service, we are pretty much on every podcasting service. You got pod, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser. Um, I think there's a couple other ones up there that Randy could probably go through and tell us what they are, but it's all good. If you like this, I'm obviously. The, I'm but, in the process of buying a shirt. So. He's in the, oh, he's buying a shirt? Look at him. He's going to the merch tab. <laughs> And buying a shirt. And Wally's just sitting here going, all right, fuck it, whatever. Anyways, we continue. This week, we're looking at the movie Motocrossed, uh, picked by, I guess, me and Randy last week. Yeah, it was a, um, a joint decision, because I was going to pick Halloween Town, but then you brought up the wonderful, magical movie of Motocross. Right. Oh, we was that do... kids movie themed? Is that where you got <laughs> Halloween Town? I think he was on the uh, idea of the fact that this week is Halloween, but it's not anymore because we're but doing this on November 1st, thus yeah, doing so a movie the, called Halloween like, Town after Halloween didn't make much sense. Gotcha. Right. So I yeah, said, if we're going to go okay. Disney Channel movies, why don't we go another another way? Why don't we get some motorcycles out and fucking rip it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> fucking rip it these little movies are all very wholesome <laughs> you know that's the theme I, I think with most of the Disney Channel original movies this is the first Disney Channel original movie that we are reviewing on here probably going to be the last I don't know who's going to be picking another one uh, <laughs> I'm going to pick another one just because I feel like well he's not going to like it <laughs> oh, Jesus. It, no there's so, I mean it depends depends what it is the Cheetah Girls <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that no god now, they, what you're saying though, Wally, is yeah, most of these movies do have like that heartfelt, wholesome quality to them. Obviously, it's a it's a family channel, so they kind of have to have that like, hey, uh, this is about family, and there's a family yeah, message, a message here, right? Yeah, exactly. There's a family message. It's kind of like a Mulan story too, you know. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like it. Nice a Mulan. Well, I I loved like Johnny Tsunami and stuff like it. Dude, we're good. Uh, that was good. Johnny Tsunami's. Where I remember it's at. that. 
Yeah. But motocross, what it's about, a young girl secretly possesses, poses, oh my God, let me take, let me take that Ooh. back, possesses. Jennifer's body. This is a different movie. <laughs> Jesus. A young girl <laughs> secretly poses as her twin brother to win the big motocross race for him after he breaks his leg. Oh, so sad. Yeah. Does he does he break his leg though? Like I know they say a couple times in it, like oh I heard you broke your leg or you injured your leg. They don't really say he broke it. You know what I mean? Like it was just like a. It didn't. Look, I'm gonna tell you, you broke your leg. You're not doing what he was doing. He was no. Doing, he was they like, said ooh, it, ooh. <laughs> they said it wasn't broken. It was a. That was the good news. Right. That's what I, I was gonna say. I remember them saying like it wasn't broken. It was just like severely sprained or like bone bruise or something on his like. Oh, he was yeah. up cooking and shit. shit. While she was racing, so I'm assuming it wasn't broken. Yeah, yeah he, he was, was fine. He was cooking. Standing he was, he was, trying to make that spaghetti. He was cooking some, t- some terrible spaghetti, some crunchy spaghetti. Hey, sometimes crunchy spaghetti's not that bad. Come on. <laughs> ever had crunchy spaghetti? I don't think you've ever had crunchy spaghetti, Steve. I have. I definitely oh. have. Uh, I, I probably made it. <laughs> all right, now it's all coming together. Now it's coming yeah. together. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> where, where to watch motocross? If you have a subscription to Disney Plus, you can watch it on there. You can also watch it on other places. This threw me for a little bit of a loop. I figured with it being a Disney Channel original movie, it would only be on Disney Plus, right? But you can also rent it on YouTube and Google Play. Ooh. But it's free on, um, on Disney. You got Disney. Well, it's not you free. Yeah. You gotta have a subscription, but. Once you well, do have it, right? mm, whatever. Like it, you know, they got YouTube movies that if you don't have to pay any money to watch them on YouTube, those would be free to me. That's where I thought I'd found it at first, but then it showed me the rent option on the old YouTube. Yeah, I was like, it's a Disney movie. I'm just gonna put Disney Channel. Hundred percent. This was written by Anne Austin and Douglas Sloan, which is actually based on the William Sloan Shakespeare Kettering. story <laughs> called The Twelfth Night. <laughs> Ooh. Something I didn't even think about. This movie being based on a William Shakespeare story. No, I, I still didn't put that together. <laughs> nope, still don't. I, like I said, the only reference I went with is Mulan. <laughs> yeah. Mulan, ooh, yeah. No, it, it's funny, right? Like, when you think about it and you break it down, this is kind of a story that, obviously, there's been other movies or, you know, pieces of art that have been made about, you know, yeah, through ge- generations of someone uh, portraying someone else to further themselves or do something else or whatnot, or just female empower- empowerment, right? Um, speaking of that, we, we should... don't have a female co-host here this week. Uh, her dogs are not feeling good and empty- emptying their bowels. Uh, They're shitting all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it would have been nice to have really a female to <laughs> perspective on this movie since it is about female empowerment and the fact that, you know, even in 2001, people are saying, hey, you can't do this, you can't do that. But in reality, fuck you, yes, I can. Yeah, that dad super sexist. <laughs> I don't know if it's sexist it or he's just like, I want to protect my daughter. Uh, obviously, he has a change of heart because it's a Disney movie, and at the end of it, he comes around to it. But you're right through the whole movie, dude's an asshat, man. Like, no, yeah. I'm not. I don't want you getting hurt and all this. And the mom's like, yeah, but you can let your son, it's, who is the same age and the same person, because they're twins almost, you know, like go through that and do that. Mm. It's funny how time changes traditional values to sexism, or vice versa. <laughs> no, I think you're absolutely wild. Yeah, you're 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 right. I mean, like, look at it now. Like, could you make this movie now without someone being like, "That's unrealistic"? They're just gonna no, not out. at all. Right? Could and I? Bu- try, I'd look. Could a thirty-five-year-old man dress up as a young woman and do motocross, water polo? Oh, water. <laughs> I, okay, I see where you're going. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, it's going the other way, right? Where you have people saying, "Hey, no, I identify as is a, a male." Or, sorry, I identify as a female, even though I'm a male. Not that there's anything wild. wrong with that. And, uh, you know, I'm going to... I can't... Do you identify I can't as place <laughs> anywhere in the top 500 <laughs> or 1,000 in swimming, but I'm going to go and dominate the females, um, and that's okay. I, I identify as a grape. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a pink Starburst right now. Ooh, getting them. Oh, I do. This is my favorite hoodie. <laughs> we got... I could have sworn we got, like, a whole thing... Of just pink Starburst last night. Like I would say that arguably it's the best Starburst is the pink Starburst. That 100% is. 
the red's good, but that pink is something special. <laughs> what, what did I miss? We're talking about Starburst and what I look like because I'm wearing a pink hoodie right now. Oh. But it's not pink. pink. It's, it's like a vagina. <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's orange, though, isn't it? <laughs> No. Yeah, I guess it depends on your screen, but it is actually pink. Oh, in real life, it's like it's like vibrantly pink. It's an mm. angler's hoodie. It's an angler's. Women's. I got you. <laughs> for chicks, I think. Sorry, motocross is directed by Steve Aboyum. He's also directed what Wally already said: Johnny Tsunami. Ooh. Mom's got a date with a vampire, and also some TV shows throughout the years, including several episodes of Randall Supernatural. Oh. Oh, they just I'm watching the Winchesters now I fucking love it oh Jesus is that a spinoff uh, it's about the mom and dad oh really does it have what's his yeah. face the actual dad from what is it the walking no, dead not, guy not I yet his name. it's like the younger version before they had oh, the okay. kids I feel like eventually they're gonna bring him in but who knows I feel like that's what they're doing with the Witcher right now how they got rid of Henry Cavill and they replaced it with Hemsworth's younger brother I think they're gonna do a younger Witcher that's a coin to your witcher. That's a coin to your witcher. Nah, I, the, the reason why they did that, obviously, spoilers, Henry Cavill is back as Superman, so he doesn't have the time to be the witcher anymore. Um, well, I'm not saying like real, but story-wise, why they picked him. Henry I got you. Yeah, because he looks uh, younger. Well, you know what? They might just church it up a little bit and make him look the same and make him older. Why not? Fuck it. You got deep fakes. Put, his, sure. put Henry Cavill's face on there. Fuck it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> exactly. You know how insulting that would be? Well, if he signs off on it, right? If he's just like, yeah, fine, fuck it, whatever, use my face. I don't care, but pay me. No, or but like being the actor the that you're replacing the face. face of. If I was getting paid, like, I wouldn't care. Mm. Can you like sign the rights to your face away? <laughs> you can. You can sell your, the rights now. to your face. Look, yeah, use my can. face. Do whatever you want with it. Wait, maybe not. Ah, it doesn't matter. It depends did, on how much you're paying. Did, is it any body yeah. part? Well, is Steve. that is that infinite with your body? Like, if you we have like a distinguishable, distinguished Johnson, and it's uh, really easy identified, and like somehow it gets superimposed in some sort of movie porn, and it's like <laughs> mm, I didn't sign off on this. What a good band name, the Distinguished Johnsons. This is the Distinguished Johnsons. No, you know, you, bring, you guys bring up a good point, right? Like, I'm sure we're going to see this stop? here in a, in a little bit in the coming years. Like, even Bruce Willis kind of shot down a, a theory that he sold his likeness uh, to be used for deep fakes in movies so they could keep putting him in movies. Uh, he came out and said, oh. he's like, no, that's fake. But we could be seeing that soon, right? Like, the technology is here, and you have so much to go off of with regards to you know, video and, and pictures and whatnot of all these famous people that a machine can just come in with AI and put them in it based on all those, you know, photos and do whatever they want with a deep fake. So, like, the day is going to come where you're going to get, you know, brought up on charges for something of stealing something. And you're like, well, I wasn't there. And they go, well, this video clearly shows that that's you. And you're fucked. It's a lie. It's a lie. All right. That's, that's not, not so. my Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> that's not my distinguished Johnson. But it looks like it. I mean... Uh, you got me. Fuck. It's old. It's distinguished. Salt and peppered hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A little bit of glitter on it. That's exactly it. <laughs> I think it's like a Dave Chappelle skit. Yeah. Motocross is Anyways. starring Elena or Alana. I'm not quite sure. There's no way to tell me how to say her name. But Elena Austin is Andrea Carson. Trevor O'Brien is Andrew Carson. Riley oh, Smith. Trevor O'Brien. <laughs> Riley Smith is Dean Talon, which is a great name. Fucking Dean Talon. I think most names with Talon in it are going to be solid. Like his name's Hawk Talon? Like, come on. Hawk Talon. Be fucking sick. <laughs> redundant, redundant. <laughs> uh, um, Mary Margaret Humra is Geneva Carson. I don't think they ever said the mom's name, but it was Geneva. What a interesting choice there. They did, because I was like, what the fuck kind of name is that? Well, I guess I missed They're really that. hitting you with these names. Really hitting. Uh, Tim Carhart is Ed Carson. <laughs> Scott Tara is Jason Carson, the little kid. And uh, Michael Cuneo uh, is Rene Cartier. That dude had a solid Carhart as a last name, like an actual last name. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. I must have missed part of this movie, but 
I'm looking at the casting portion, and it says Travis Pastrana was in this. Okay, Did so I miss that? yeah, we'll get to that. Or so it's young it's Travis Pastrana, Pastrana, right? Very, very young Travis Pastrana. So it's in the yeah. beginning where she uh, wants to go riding before she cuts her hair off, and she goes out mm -hmm. and tries to ride with a, gr a group of motorcycle riders. Motorcycle riders. Sounds like a fucking gang out of the Lost Boys. Um, we <laughs> It's like she wants to go and just like, test her strange. might against them or whatever, and she comes up to those three dudes on like the back of the pickup truck, and one of them's uh, Jeremy McGrath, one of them is Travis Pastrana, and the other one... Oh, I McGrath! I don't know the, guy, the guy's name. Yeah, I was. I just saw the casting thing. I was like, "Wait, hold on. Are they like, are they like the guys under the helmets?" Is what I thought at first. But I'm assuming know. probably. Well, who knows, right? Like they could have been big at that point. Well, I I feel like Travis. There's a there's a point. Like, yeah, I got it. Like growing up riding dirt bikes, right? There's a part in this where like they just get done swimming, right? That weird swimming yeah. scene. Take your yeah. shirt off. And they take off, but he does a wheelie, and the wheelie's through a really awkward place to do a fucking wheelie through. And I was like, God damn. I was like, they got people that actually know how to fucking ride bikes. That's for certain. I was like, this person probably should have eaten shit. Well, and then Good she enough. does it, but too. But if it was Travis Pastrana, but <laughs> yeah, right. it's probably, you know. She does it, too, and, like, follows them out of the scene, and you're like, holy shit, good for yeah. them. Like, they, I will give credit That's to not the easy. Disney <laughs> Channel for doing their research and actually, like, showing the world of, of motorcycle racing. Like, let's be real. They're, like, showing everything about signing up and the heats and the haulers and everything, and they're going through all the, you know, the how would I say, the factory sponsorships and everything like that. Like, that is yeah. real life, and you don't see a lot of movies, even, like, mainstream movies, kind of putting that much detail into a movie that I'm sure costs Disney Channel nothing to fucking produce. Yeah, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Whatsoever. Nothing. There, that outdoor dirt track, though, that was around their house was kind of cool. That kind of reminded me of my... Like, because I remember trying to make ramps all the fucking time when I was a kid. Like, a, a little wee lad. A little wee lad. Yeah, so Travis Pastrana, famously growing up, had that. So who knows? That could have been his house. Like, who, you know he what I mean? He still like, has that. Well, he does, definitely, with the Nitro cir Circus and everything. But growing up, yeah. is what they had it like the front yard was the track. And that looks exactly the same, you know, setup. So I went to see Steel Panther. This is not a huge tangent, but I went to see Steel Panther with Sean, <laughs> I don't know, like a year, <laughs> two years ago. <laughs> There's an infamous story with Stanowitz with Sean, but I, on the way out, yeah. we saw Travis Pastrana and the Nitro Circus crew. Like, oh yeah, I remember you telling me about yeah, that. Yeah, 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 it was like so random. You're like, holy shit, holy shit, what's up? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Where they were across the street, I was like, what's up, guys? And then you saw Travis Pastrana, Pastrana walk down our side. I was like, what's up, dude? He was like, what's up, man? I'm like, oh, that was cool. That was <laughs> <laughs> Funny thing too is like he always looks like a small dude, kind of. You know what I mean? Because he's like, he's you've always seen him as like a kid, right? And then yeah. you see him, and you're like, oh shit, no, he's, he's, he's fucking huge. He's, he's tall. tall shit. Yeah. <laughs> Big boy. He's probably going to be super small when he gets older with all the broken bones and whatnot compressing oh, on top oh, of he's, himself. Oh, he's fucked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's already fucked. You know the Terminator? Yeah. He's made of metal? Well, that is Travis Pastrana. Was that him that just landed the triple front flip? I hope not. Jesus Christ. Recently? That, no, One it, of them it, landed probably, fucking... it probably happened at like the oh. Nitro Circus compound or something, but like... Dude, no, it was, it, it was at his... I'm pretty sure it was at his house. Or his house or whatever. Yeah, it's the that's the the nitro circus. That's up in Annapolis, I believe. Yeah. Still wild to think of like growing up watching the X Games, the craziest shit you saw was like when Travis Pastrana did a lazy boy where he like just laid down on the motorcycle and like, you know, took his hands off and everybody's like, Holy shit. And then you flash forward like three years later and I remember Kerry Hart trying to do the first backflip in Los Angeles, and he just goes straight and up, almost died, and doesn't even the the bike doesn't even flip, and just goes right back down, like right on top. Oh and he God. breaks like his fucking ankles and like all that this shit. That ended his career almost, didn't Pre it? Like, like pretty much, it that put him was, out that for was a the while. end. Yeah, but then flash forward two more years, and you have people just doing a backflip like it's nothing. And They're doing backflip Supermans, backflip Lazy Boys, backflip Knack Knacks. Right. <laughs> it's crazy. And now they're doing triple backflips. Like, the sport has progressed so fast in such an amount of time where it's like, what do you, how, there's nowhere else to go. You know what I mean? Like, what do you, what do you do? That's not fast. I think I just, I'm pretty sure I just watched a video of one of the guys doing a uh, quadruple backflip. Yep. From Nike Circus, one of the guys from there. Was. They did a fucking, they did four backflips. That's wild, man. Like, again, yeah. watching, I remember this very vividly of watching the X Games. It was probably like 2006, because I think it was our last year of high school, Wally, and Travis Pastrana 
doing the double backflip in the like the forum or wherever it was in LA. And stadium, uh, where, yeah. The stadium, I don't know where the Lakers yeah. play, whatever, it's Staples Center. And um, like how big of a deal that was for him to just even attempt to do it. Right. The fact and, is, so a lot, a lot of these are happening outside of competition, right? So that's sure, where, like, yeah. you, you, but he was doing it first time in competitions, which is fucking wild. Like, right. No <laughs> safety ramp where it's soft and everything. Yeah. No, like, hey, let's use this ramp that has an extra kicker at the top so it fucking throws you when you do a front flip. None of that bullshit. He just went, yo, I'm a man and I'm going to double backflip this motherfucker. Let's go. Barrel rolls, yeah, yeah. but not Decent. with the bike. Right. With your bodies, with your like, body, <laughs> while burial, flying, body burial or something, yeah, it's no, I was, fucking I was, crazy. It, it, no, it really is. I was really big into X Games every year, watching that shit. I still try to watch it, but it's just not as it's not as exciting because obviously, just like any generational kind of sport or anything, like everybody phases out, and you're like, who the fuck is this person, and who's that, and like they're doing all this crazy shit, and it's hard to follow. And honestly, they don't put as much on. TV or even they do YouTube or whatnot, but it's just, it's hard to watch. Like, you want to watch it live, but you can't because the thing happened two hours ago and you already know because they put everything on YouTube. So then you're like watching it and you're like, fuck this. And all media is yeah. changing, has changed. It's all weird now. It's hard to yeah. want to watch TV stuff. Yeah. It's funny too. <laughs> like, yeah, back in the 90s, watching the X Games and they had like delusion and stuff and like all these crazy weird types of like you know stuff that is phased out and you don't see it now and then like after the x games i remember they had the timberland games where they had like lumberjack games and that shit was wild you know you had those people it was like it just, felt extreme auxiliary sports that's what it was right x games extreme sports that's yeah, what it was yeah, and then pretty you, much. they had all these whack crazy cool shit like throughout the year i remember when the mega ramp first came out well, that, that was, mega yeah. ramp shit mm -hmm. Danny that Way, was crazy yeah that was crazy that's so a really crazy. like one like tall one. <laughs> yeah. 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 Big one, yeah. Yeah, you watch people fucking fly to flat. Like they're already twenty feet in the air, they'll case the top of the ramp and then they just fly all the way down to the what bottom. Was the, what what was the one guy who went all, all the way to the top? I know I know exactly he used to do like he used to do no like no grab three sixties. I can't remember his name. It might have been an S. Or something, something like, like that. He was, a, he was like but bald fucking, when it happened, but he literally, you can you look it up. You see him clip his ankles oh, on the okay. top, right? Cases with his ankles on the top, and he gets launched away from the ramp all the way down to the flat. Yeah. Like, and you're like, this 40 dude's feet dead. straight down <laughs> this dude onto is nothing. Dead. And like, he gets up, man, walks off. But they did say afterwards, as soon as he went into the curtain, he just collapsed and he was, he was done. Oh, yeah. He was fucking done. You don't come back from that. <laughs> well, he came back, but you don't come back quickly from that shit. No, no, no. No, no. He actually came back and killed it. He was like one of the f the first guys to do, I think, like a no, like doing three flips and shit, mm -hmm. like without grabs. Like he was like the non grab guy. Oh yeah, yeah. He was doing like five forties and stuff over the the first jump yeah, or whatever. Grabbing and not your even fucking touching. Board. You know how hard that is. Like yeah, yeah. Bob well, Burnquist was doing that too. He just released another part, by the way. Good for him. Good old Bobby yeah, B. He, he's old as fuck. He, oh. <laughs> you know, it's funny like this. This is bringing me back to the days of just playing Tony Hawk Pro Skater and like, you know, of, who, who are you picking, Bob Burnquist or Bucky Lassick? You know what I mean? Like, I'm always picking Bucky, and it's funny seeing like his career through the X Games. And then I remember watching it, it was either last year or the year before. He was still in the Vert competition, and like, I think he finished well, he's third. Amazing. Yeah, he's never. He's always been probably the best. Like overlooked, like underrated. Right. Obviously, you uh, always had Tony Hawk in the Vert. Then you had Bob. And then you had, you know, Andy McDonald and all those other guys. And the Bucky Lassick was always there, like the, the guy always on the edge trying to get in. And then you had, what, Pierre-Luc Gagnon came in, whatever his yeah, yeah, yeah. French ass name. What the fuck was that? That's yeah. his name. <laughs> Pierre-Luc Gagnon Tony, or something like that. Tony Hawk went down. Like, he's 51, 52, 53, something like that now. But he did, uh, he was doing, like, some flat ground tricks or something like that. Or he did, like, a kickflip in some variation. And, like, he was out for a year. Like he, oh. he fucked his shit up on something simple just recently. He was out for almost a whole year. So I, it's funny. I actually watched a YouTube video about that like two or three days ago. It was he was trying to do a very old McTwist or something on a vert ramp, and something happened. He's like, I I, I can't really remember what happened, but he landed on. It was his on femur. his ramp. Yeah, he landed <laughs> on his femur and like broke it in three places, and he lost like an inch out of that um, leg or something. So they had to put a metal rod in to try and like stretch it and like have the gro like the bone grow back to it to get him up and he got on the board too quickly and fucked his shit up again so like he's messed up 
That oh is the God. probably arguably one of the worst spots to break a bone. Oh my God! Yeah. It's in the meatiest part of your body. Mm. Like what? <laughs> it fucking sucks. Well, in the wild thing, Bryan that's the hardest bike bone in, a in your body pipe too, right? It. So to break that, like the <laughs> amount of force is crazy. Yeah, that's no fucking joke, man. That's no. fucking terrifying. Now that I think about it, <laughs> yeah, I've broken dude. lots of bones. Not that. My uh, one of my dad's friends. You probably know him, Scott. Um, the guy that rides ATVs or used to ride ATVs. He lives across the street from my dad. He broke yeah, yeah, his yeah. femur as well. And you can see when he walks, one leg is longer than the other. Like, it sucks. Oh. I fucking nope, not for me. Thank <laughs> God. Good. Nope. Right anyway. now, I'm, I've been. I started skating again like maybe a month ago, and I've been out for two weeks because I pulled a calf muscle. <laughs> Well, don't it hurt to walk downstairs. Right, my I was gonna say, don't uh, ass. don't collapse another lung, Wally. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not going that hard. <laughs> the pain. I was just. I was on flat ground, and I literally just jumped. And I guess I stretched my foot too fast. My calf <laughs> fucking pulled. I was like, oh fuck. I was like, I need to start stretching more. I need more water. <laughs> I need more. Just so pour the water cold. on the calf muscle. <laughs> yeah we're walking it we're like we're walking all the time yesterday we went walking and i'm like limping around like an old man while i'm trying to take my son trick-or-treating just get the candy son I, i'm gonna stay right here just, just walk to the house i'm gonna stay on the street that's exactly what i did it's funny <laughs> you say that that's literally what i did i was like i'm not going down the driveway kid that's, that's i don't have you. the strength or the energy to walk <laughs> yeah. down seven driveways today sorry nope not for me no anyways for me. back to motocrossed it is rated tvg Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, it's on TV. I think this is our, I don't uh, like not lowest rated movie, but like, I don't know how do you, how you say that. Like, it's the the most family friendly movie we've done on this podcast. <laughs> not a lot of dicks. <laughs> not a lot of well, feeding. Actually, it's funny you say that. There are a lot of dicks in this movie, and I think that's the point about it. <laughs> and then Especially she went that fucking dad. No, oh, I know, right? God. I mean, he was he was. Look, obviously it's a new day and age, right? Like, everything's changed. But he definitely... I thought he was a dick. I think it mostly up until the point... Maybe it was a dad sauce that kicked in. But up until he dad took her for, like, a little walk and was like, Yo, I didn't want you... I didn't want to have kids to ride. I wanted for... I was hoping for a girl so I didn't have to deal with, like, injuries and shit. I'm like, alright. little redemption here. <laughs> a little well, bit of redemption let's, here. Let's be real. That's a very, like, human interaction and a very human story here like in a in a movie that is supposedly to a generation of people watching that they could they are probably going through possibly the same shit and that's why i sort of i dig the type of movies that were coming out on disney channel around this time like they had a message that actually meant something like your dad could be this fucking asshole but in reality he's an asshole because he's so guarded to the fact that like you just said i didn't want to deal with this and yeah, I had a boy, and I'm allowing him to do it, but I really only wanted a girl, and I didn't want to deal with this. But he's not able to say that, so that's a super real, you know, situation that people could be in. Good. I'm curious. Like, I obviously don't watch any kid shit anymore, because there's no, no kids TV. I mean, there is, but no one watches it. Right. You know, it's so YouTube. I'm curious if it's still the same kind of stuff, the same kind of values. I feel Randy, like it's not. tell me, yeah, you, you, you're a kid. All she, she me. <laughs> He's like, I gotta watch me? Disney Channel. Yeah, I've been watching Paw Patrol for the past fucking two months. Is what's so the message that. on Paw Patrol? Is there a good family wholesome message there? Uh, just don't be a bitch and do what you gotta do. I guess that's, that's a good I message. I mean, if you like want to break it down, the dogs, the dogs have a job. You gotta do your job. The dogs don't be, have to don't do be scared. Job. Okay, but you also gotta think now that I like. Were if you look the shows that were on when we were young, like even the kids shows, like the Teletubbies and stuff, it was fucking whack. That's creepy. Well, see, yeah. here's my thing, and I, I've had this conversation. A so lot of every times. generation probably has a little bit of everything. Well, yeah, but I don't want to say we grew up in the golden age of television, but we really did. Like you, the nine, the eighty, let's say eighty five, because it was all television. Two thousand five was definitely the best time for television, right? You had the best shows, you had the best actors, you had the best storylines. In which, the problem is when you do a storyline, it's hard not to have somebody repeat that storyline and go, "Well, The Simpsons did it." You know what I mean? So you're, you're not going to have the Simpsons originality. Song, it was the golden age. Is that what you're 
That's what I'm saying, because everybody did it first in the 80s and 90s. So trying to There's make also just or do something so the much. same or say the, say the same story, it's hard to do. So you have all these better things that already did it because you have people going, well, we can't retread this or we can't do the same story, so it has to be original. And how many original ideas you know, can you come up with? Yeah, so originality is what right. you're saying. But it was also like booming like video era like that's where it was like sure. the largest because they were selling vhs tapes and along with being in theaters so like there was multiple ways to get paid for those things there was like a million different i don't know it felt like there was just so more so much more populated with media like no, like yeah, media like absolutely that. right yeah like you had movies that are and just now it just feels more industrialized for whatever too. yeah i know you're absolutely right the other thing, too, I wanted to touch on was just the wholesomeness of TV shows or messages of TV shows. I've tried to watch sitcoms. Sitcoms? Sitcoms. <laughs> Don't um, be a girl. <laughs> what is that? Oh. <laughs> um, I've tried to watch certain sitcoms that have come out now, and there's just no message behind it. It's all, a, a, like, not shock humor, but just, like, I, we need a joke every, like, 15 to 30 seconds. Uh, everything needs to just like be a quick in one and done type thing, and there's no overall stories anymore. There's no like at the end of it of, you're learning something. A lot of that changed during the the pandemic. Mm, no, like when I'm it comes to like that. well, when it comes to this quick fired comedy, like because I mean people were trying to do a lot of this. Like they weren't performing live, so you weren't waiting for people to laugh. So if you're like watching all these like all these po the booming fucking podcasts that came out during the pandemic a lot of those comedy podcasts that came out a lot yeah. of those guys are just firing rapid firing comedy at that point yeah no i'm talking about like the big bang theory and stuff like that like there's no oh there's no wholesomeness to me in that like yeah there's <clears throat> people like each other and they get with each other and whatnot and you could say the same thing about friends i'm talking to you big bang theory Randy. for uh, sure not but was it uh, big bang theory like how i the same era as how i met your mother because how i met your mother yeah. definitely felt like it did have wholesome messages right but that's what i'm saying like even how i met your mother while it does have some wholesome message this the comedy's still the same of okay we need to shock you with this we need to do this as quick as possible and maybe throw in a little bit of humanity but i'm talking about like the home improvements or the all in the family or uh, what's the, the one with urkel like all that those taught you a lesson through each one of those you know episodes like yeah, at the, yeah there's something that happens and they need to fix it or somebody needs to learn something to come back together then at the end of the episode you learn something and you go for there's no look more at the, look at the french, television. french prince of bel-air like i've never cried watching a sitcom before until watching that like the episode where will smith is like why doesn't she want or why doesn't he want me man like all this stuff like it it hits like what do you well, have like that, was, that now well that was actually him sure but that's what I'm saying. No, there's, you're right. You're 100 percent right. There's no, there's not a lot of wholesome shit out there. Yeah. When it comes to TV shows nowadays, I no. can't think of one. That's what I'm saying. And like everything needs to be shocking or like, oh my god, did you see that? Or like, you know, Euphoria, great TV show, but what is it about it that's good? More dicks. <laughs> the big old schlong. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, what do you have in that <laughs> that's wholesome? Obviously, nothing. The is show's that yours, not Steve? Trying what? Was that yours? Did it was in there for sure. That like, one in there. Well, no, they did the, uh, the, the fucking hogs. <laughs> I knew it. They came over, we, we put up the green screens, and they got some good, you know, reference they did. points. They had, Steve, you know how, how they do motion capture with the little balls? Well, they put like the, the dots all over balls. it. They had to use all a lot of dots, Steve guys. All over Steve Johnson. <laughs> a lot of dots. And they're like, they had to, like, get different motions in physics for it, too. Like, they're like, all right, Mr. Muscoles, we're going to need you to jump. Not a high jump. We need diff three different jumps right now. Look, at the end of the day, I was swing exhausted. swing left and right real quick. I was we need, a little, we need a little hop. You got to jump over this foot over here. Need a hop, and skip, and a big, jump. Big Let's old go. leap. <laughs> we motion capture that dick. All right. <laughs> now we're going to have to have you go turn on your head. All right, go upside down. We're going to we're gonna do this. Uh, <laughs> Flex it. Flex it, Steve. <laughs> Let me see what you're I'm working standing. with. Hey, where's the fluffer at? Get him in here. We need to... <laughs> Can you explain why I need to do a handstand right now? <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's all it's it's in the contract. It's fine. <laughs> Runtime of this Do you own movie. the rights to it? Do I own the rights to it? So unfortunately I had to sign away the rights for my Johnson in one particular TV show. But if I want to uh, put it in uh, other movies or TV shows, I can then license it 
for each ones of those. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Here's here's the movie pitch. Oh jeez. So <laughs> bad you're, you're a black guy. <laughs> I'm a black somehow, guy. Somehow, you know how they have like trading spaces and stuff like that. The, the TV trading show on TLC, are, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which was very like, wholesome. So, wife swap or something like that. Yeah. So I smell your lightsaber. You're you're a nice wholesome uh, black fella. And then you ha your penis gets replaced with Steve's penis. You guys have to swap. <laughs> and then there's your TV show. Yeah. Sign it up now. <laughs> well, I would say I would get residuals for that, and I would like that because I would make money. What's the? What's the 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 what's the what's the story? What's the, I, uh, <laughs> what's the story? <laughs> what's the story? I don't know. What's the overarching I think that plot through. of this? Just black man has a white guy's dick. That's it. What a surprise that would be. I find it up interesting. Like, oh, I don't even know. <laughs> but the roles are reversed Run. because, oh, okay, so that could be the ta the tagline, right? Like where everybody thinks I what's don't the stereotype think I could, is reversed or something. I don't think I can go far into this without sounding like I'm racist. <laughs> nope. <laughs> you can, I don't think there's any way I could go any further. I'm pretty sure this. this is where we cut it all. Okay, so what you're saying is we should, we should wrap that either up. Side, either side. Either <laughs> side. Wrap, <laughs> wrap up that distinguished Johnson. Yep. So motocross. Well, on it. Uh, <laughs> G rated motocross. <laughs> G TVG uh, is the <laughs> runtime ninety two minutes. It felt kind of long. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, I've seen this movie more than you think I have. Uh, of course, you're going to say, "Yeah, duh." Uh, it doesn't feel that long to me, only because like it's only in like three places, right? Like it's at their house. It's in whatever that store is, and then it's at the racetrack. They don't go anywhere else. You know what I mean? Sure. Thank you for helping me come up with my uh, my budget price. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, you're going to be a little disappointed when we get to that. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh. I didn't have a budget because they were, they were all slave labor. <laughs> they went, hey. All those kids were fucking. Hey. They are painted foot picks. You want, you want to be in a dude? movie? You want to be in a movie? Let me see them feet. Let, let, let me see them feet. You want me to move? Uh, it, no, next. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I can put you on a motorcycle. You want to be on a motorcycle? <laughs> okay. I will say it's that getting, this... It's getting creepy, Steve. This, this, it that is young Disney woman. Channel in the 2000s ran by what What was his name? Dan Snyder or something? Motherfucker was Dan smelling Snyder. feet, looking at feet, being all about Wasn't feet. Wasn't Dan Snyder I don't Nickelodeon? Know. Same thing. Doesn't matter. A weird dude at the top doing Hannah Montana bullshit. Uh, being somebody else, <laughs> but then being somebody at the same time, he was everywhere. We don't know. Yo, this is okay. Al Alana Elena Austin. <laughs> yeah, that's. I'm looking at current pictures of this lady. Pretty good looking lady. Good for her. Yeah, let is. me say, she did a a, a great mm -hmm. job of of looking like a a young man. So that's one thing I did want to touch on. This, job. if we want to get deep into it before we go on to the the another like the extra things. Obviously, it's a movie. I understand it's a movie, but. Beyond the guy who can't fucking see a millimeter in front of his face, would you fall for that if you knew no, Andy no, Carson? No. Right. But no <laughs> one knows him, right? The only person who would would be the guy at the counter selling shit. And he's the only one where they do say, okay, we're giving him a, a plausible plot point of where there's no plot hole here of, well, he obviously can see this person because he can't. So I feel like the movie is well thought out in regards to no one knows who this person actually is. Every single person that talks to him, oh, I've heard about you, I heard you're really good, or I heard you got injured, or this or that. Like, if you met this person and no one said that was a woman, would you think that's a guy? So, so I would think it was, I would think it's a woman the whole time, yeah. but I would have thought it was like more of like a woman that's recently been like, uh, I'm actually trying to be a guy. But in 2001? I don't know. There was that. That was happening all the time. It just—he's also a young kid, common. right? So you got that weird puberty but thing where he uh, could still sound like his voice me? or whatever, oh, you can't hear me. and 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 stuff like that. Yes, I can still hear you. Good. Okay. Uh, good. You know what I mean? So like, sorry. I don't know what their ages are supposed to be—like sixteen, seventeen, or something like that. But I don't know. I feel like with the haircut. The, the dirt rubbed on her face and all this stuff beyond the uh, the nail polish, I would be like, 
Hey, what's up, bro? Now, if I was that Dean Talon guy and I was spending days with this person, Dean I would kind of start going, something's, something's up with this here. Uh, Look, glasses and the hat, I might take about 15 to 20 minutes to figure out. As soon as they started talking, I would have been a little questionable. But as soon as those things came off, I'd have been like, oh, yeah. Dude, when she did the boy voice, oh, my God. Yeah. Hey, yo, uh, yeah, I'll take those boots now. So yeah. my question is, if there was a there was that one dude that was like trying to get Andy Carson onto their team, he obviously knew who Andy Carson was because he wanted him on the team. How did he not know? Well, it, so you know it's all I mean? word of mouth, and like so at the time of you got to think you're going from place to place to place to place. You're seeing all these different people. You're only hearing about these riders. This is like, it's not like they're just going to the local track all the time. This is an event that's happening throughout you know it's like a tour it almost sounds like but this is one stop for whatever tournament this is kind of thing right so if he's not going to all these places and he's only running his local tracks and making a buzz there these big businesses which that guy was he's not going to know who the, what this person looks like he's only going to say hey andy carson is somebody you got to look out for remember the name he's going to be at the track you know make sure you talk to him to see if he would want to possibly be you know, part of whatever we're doing here. Yeah, but it doesn't like that goes for like a, like scouts for like high school, uh, like college scouts. They go and watch the games and then talk to them and like want to get more information from them instead right, but of. But this isn't just showing up and oh, that's Andy Carson. Let's get some information from him now. Okay, well, I could see that, and definitely like maybe other people were doing that, but this guy obviously seemed a little flustered with everything he was doing. They obviously made it yeah. a big deal that, like, he's trying to look through his books and, like, people are calling him and he's all over the place. And I feel like that's another tip of the, the hat to no one's actually staring at this person long enough besides Dean Talon, who they make out to be, excuse me, a fucking, like, retard. You know what I mean? So... <laughs> Sheesh. I went, I went hard R. I'm sorry. A very dumb person. Uh, How would you not hard R that... Very true. In 2001, yeah, I mean, let, let's be real. I'm not talking about handicapped people. I'm talking about this dude was just dumb. You know what I mean? So think of every single person that Andrea Carson talks to in this movie. I get that maybe all of them would kind of be like, eh, all right, whatever. It's a dude. Sure. A little weird, but it's a dude. Like even the girl that um, Dean's like crushing over, she's like an airhead. She doesn't care. She's not paying attention. She's in her phone or like she made me angry. fashion. Right. That's what I'm saying. So Loser. I don't know. I kind of buy the fact that everybody <laughs> in this movie can be like, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Andy Carson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a dude. Hmm. I mean, I just felt exactly like a Disney movie to me. <laughs> so I, I didn't buy it for one second. Yeah, I didn't buy it at all. <laughs> well, and that's the other thing you got to think right, of. Son of a it, bitch. It's, it's a Disney movie and it's not supposed to be, yeah. you know, theater experience or like cinema quality Oscar worthy uh, Hillary Swank being a dude you know I feel like this is just I am the dude disguised as a dude dressed as another dude look at you shredded like a julienne salad boy got any tips <laughs> what <laughs> give it up Matt <laughs> god damn it Anyway, that should be a soundbite. It should be a soundbite at this point. <laughs> That's the best scene of that movie. Uh, I replay it in my head constantly. Um, I tell my anytime something comes up about a map now, I just look at Do my wife. Map. I just look at her, and she gives me this. I swear to fucking god, if you fucking say, <laughs> you say fucking what? Say it, I swear say to what? god. I'm like, say what? What are you talking about? And she's like, I will fucking end your life. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then I'll be like, Oh, what, oh. is that a map? Is that give me that map? <laughs> that thing you sent me, Steve, with him and the family, it was the fucking Hysterical. best thing. Hysterical. It was amazing. <laughs> he's got that kid in the bathtub, face down, and he's drawing on his back, like, just making <laughs> shit up. Randy, it's I know so you're good. sitting there going, what are you fucking talking about? So, no, no. I, this came out, I don't know, a, a couple years back, but it's on the DVD of Tropic Thunder, and it's like special features of Osiris, uh, what's his fucking last name? I don't even remember. Uh, but Robert Downey Jr. as the black guy, the dude playing a dude disguised as another dude, he can't get out of character. So, like, he's, like, with his family, still, like, <laughs> so shell-shocked from the war. But they're in now time, but he's not. You know what I mean? And then there's, there's one part where he's, like, 
under a bunch of bushes, like th- ripping up hot dogs and just throwing them out for like the the Viet Cong to come out of out of the ground <laughs> to so grab. Good. Like, <laughs> it's 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 the funniest <laughs> shit I've ever seen because it's not scripted. He is literally, and you can tell he's winging it. There's a couple parts where he almost it's loses so it. God. Right? <laughs> it's but so good. I what swear to God, <laughs> laying on his wife's stomach and she looks so uncomfortable. Yeah, <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> and he just, I don't break character into the DVD commentary. Like no DVD uh, commentary. It's so good. It's so good. All right, getting back to Motocross, the movie we're here to talk about. It was released on February sixteenth, two thousand one, on the Disney Channel. That's when I was moving here. I think that's when I moved here. Right, so I was here, I moved to this area. Me and Wally, obviously, uh, we have a, a rapport because we moved from other places far away to the land of opportunity, apparently, here. Um, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> old, Mer- old Maryland. Old Maryland. You guys uh, are having a good time here, don't lie. Look. I was just sick for a week right off. <laughs> <laughs> I was laying in a bathtub. My son was <laughs> sick for a week. I felt like I just ran 40 miles. <laughs> okay, well, besides that. I had to fall to around my glass son's my mom and boyfriend last night for fucking three hours. It was great. Listen to her yell at some new dude. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys end up going to? Uh, yeah, yeah, not because I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> Did you take your boy? I did. That, that was, was the little... reason I went. Yeah, dog. No, Did he have a good yeah, time? Yeah, he had a blast. He had well, a time of his fucking mind. life. <clears throat> I, I snuck imagine. him onto that. What is that big purple roller coaster? The, right in the beginning, as you walk in off to your left, and my, we didn't know where the line went. We thought we were going on a smaller one. <laughs> my son gets on it, and we, there's like five humps in that fucking thing. And the, I look the, over the, the anaconda. No, no, no. Is it the wooden look, one? No, no, no. It's like the probably the second, maybe third biggest one in the park, but it's purple. It's like the Polish chariot, maybe. Oh, maybe so you did go to see? Okay, Randy tried to tell me you guys were going to. King's Dominion, and I was like, no, no, no. He said that's what that's just what my sister said. Garden, but she's yeah. also well, kind initially, of dumb. initially that was what we were supposed to do a while ago, but that that switched up when we found out that the Sunday that we wanted to go King's Dominion didn't have the right time frame oh, for I us to you, go. I got you. Apollo's yeah. Chariot, that's Apollo's the Chariot. Then yeah, the, the one with the hump that gets really fast, and then you go backwards, and it's amazing. My son's face is white. Awesome. As he fuck. learned today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got to go on a couple roller coasters, but besides that, it was all haunted houses. That what place is you? definitely so. If I had to rate that between that and King's Dominion, that one was pretty good. That was pretty freaky. They had a bunch of the houses were good. Is like, what you're saying? Yeah, the houses were decent. Like some bayou places. Some lady like jumped out in front of my son. My son almost fucking decked her, and then she screamed at him like, "You can't touch us!" <laughs> I was Get like, "You Matt. touched him!" I was like, "Get the fuck out of the way!" <laughs> Jesus Christ. Look, son, you can't punch people in the face. They're trying to scare me. I got that. But you just get... All right, fuck it. Next person, just... (laughs) Yeah. It's like, calm down. The lady was clearly just in the wrong, though. It wasn't that... She was doing her job, but she just didn't know where she was. I think it was dark. She didn't know her boundaries. she, like, jumped right in front of my... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my son was just walking casually, like... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and then fucking you should my have son told, just look, pushed her look, out of the way. Everybody gets one. That's what you should have told your son. So hold it. <laughs> and if you punch somebody, yeah, get, oh, my bad. You, I, you scared me. I kept betting my son money to do fucked up shit. And I was like, at least you get $50 in Bush Garden Jail. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we only got a few hours left, so you don't even have that much long. You don't even not going to be in jail for that long. So, I mean, you could earn a solid 60, 70 bucks if you go jump off that little bridge over there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, want, you want 60 bucks? That's a game. Well, not anymore, depending on what you got. Uh, jump off that bridge, boy. I'll give it to you. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, just go steal that lady's uh, fake wig. That's what, I kept <laughs> to, that's what I kept telling her to do. Grab go that rip w- wig off. and run. <laughs> Did he do anything? No. My son. My oh. son's. What a- sense. He's smart. He's a smart kid. <laughs> Sixty bucks to jump on like me. You're crazy, <laughs> Wally. I'll do we it went, for five bucks. We went Shit, on. A, I'll do it we went free. on a, a tubing trip, and there's probably like a twenty foot wall, and everyone was pussing out, and I climbed up with him. And old Chip Woody. Oh yeah. And, yeah. And I was like, I was like, Junior. I was like, Jump. He's like, No. I was like, What if I give you a hundred bucks? And he's like, All right. And I was like, <laughs> I just got fucking swindled. <laughs> 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 he was already probably going to jump. He right. didn't want to have to climb it, back down. The I, was like, I think I saw the video of that. Yeah, I got fucking swindled. That would be funny. If, as he's about to jump, sure. he turns back to Wally and goes, I would have done it for free, and then jumps. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Exactly. Got him. Get him. All right. Motocross budget and box office. Guess what? There is no budget anywhere for this movie. There's barely anything on the internet with regards to how this movie was made, where it was shot, uh, how much it cost, anything like that, any type of... Obviously, it's not making money. This isn't made to make money. It's made to just be on Disney Channel, but there's nothing out there with regards to anything. So Uh, we're going to skip the budget and the box office. Okay. (laughs) Child labor! (laughs) Probably. (laughs) They did it all for feet pics. I don't know. Oh God! Oh yeah. God! Yeah. Oh, but Jesus. what we can talk about is the movie that came before this and the movie that came after this on Disney Channel, because again, they were doing this where they were churning and burning these movies out so fast that it almost was like a movie, like every week or I don't know, if it seemed like every week, but I think it was every month there was a new Disney Channel original movie, and it was probably like a span of five to maybe eight years where they were just making these movies constantly. There was okay. m- infinite <laughs> okay. amounts of these movies. Now, like yeah. now that you just maybe try to think about this, I was like, "There's so many movies." Oh, for sure. So the movie that came before this was Xenon the Sequel. I remember Xenon. Yeah, what was that? That the song fucking Protozoa or something? That was <laughs> the shit. <laughs> Make my heart go boop 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 or whatever, that. dude. If you have not seen Xenon, you, you were also more engrossed in the the Disney Channel movies than any of my other friends. 100%. Look, motherfucker, I was a bored kid, and my 100%. parents told me to stay home, <laughs> and I needed to watch the Disney Channel. And I did. Fucking watch the shit. And you know what? I like movies, so like, Disney Channel movie? All right, let's watch it. And most of them, most of them, were entertaining. Were they good movies? Absolutely not. But they were entertaining <laughs> when I was fucking five years, well, ten years old, probably. But Randy, sure, watch never, Xenon, and then watch Xenon, the sequel, and then I believe there's a Z3 and all this shit. It was, it was, dude, shut up. You, you had to be in it at the what moment. These fucking sports cars? It was, it was good. No, these sports cars. No, it was a girl in space, basically, in the future, is what it was. Um, one of her friends, I believe, is... Uh, 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 what the hell is that girl's name? In the first movie, I think it's uh, Raven. That's so Raven, that girl. Uh, Raven Simone. Raven, Raven Simone, Simone, yeah. I got the cast up right here. Look at you. Nebula Wade. Is that the Nebula. one that had uh, that the uh, uh, black guy that made Kim Kardashian famous, or is that something else? No, that was... Uh, who was that? Ray J. <laughs> I, I thought... He, was he not on that TV show? Oh, maybe. Or was he a singer? Was he a singer? I, I think he was know. a rapper. Oh, and that would say Raven? Could have been. Who knows? I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm going to find out. I'm on it, don't worry. <laughs> We're I know detectives it. over here finding out who Ray J is. Who you know what's crazy is thinking about specific things that launched the way the world is now, and some random dude filming a, a sex scene with Kim Kardashian, who at the time was fucking nobody, launched that person into the stratosphere and her family into making billions and billions of dollars. Is yeah, like fucking wild to think about. Yep, this fucking all- place sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Let me off this rock. I want to go with Xenon to the fucking space station. That's where I want to be with Protozoa fucking singing. Randy, bring up the Protozoa song on YouTube. You're going to be like, this song is actually pretty fucking tight. I'm going to, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know how to spell that. Okay, just Pro- type in Xenon <laughs> song. I'm with you, so actually. <laughs> Protozoa. Protozoa. I'm assuming Proto and Zenon. Zoa. Or are you saying you don't know how to spell xenon? It was protozoa. I don't know how to okay, spell it. Yeah, I found I, it. Don't it's don't a worry. scary sounding word. I'll give you that. <laughs> that, that is not scary sounding. That is gaseous. <laughs> we I, could be is, in I thought, my, I thought my, my noise gate would stop that from coming. Your through. noise gate did not. That was so loud. Your noise gate went, we're going to allow it. We're going to allow it. Jesus. Oh. These are the things. I know that, that was happened. just air, but I feel it like was, I could jump. It was the <laughs> fucking. It was the the fucking. Mm, mm, he oh, got, yeah, push he got, out. He got in it. I for a second was like, "That's not the starting to the Protozoa song." <laughs> no, I'm listening to it right now. Oh, Sound so like we're a not dirt bike right taking off. <laughs> Speaking of dirt bikes, burp, burp, burp. <laughs> the movie that came after Motocross was called "The Luck of the Irish," and I want to say one thing about that movie. 
it's awesome. the best Disney Channel original movie because it's actually good. I've never I have heard no of idea. It. I have no idea. Maybe where, I, if I saw it, maybe. Okay, it's where a kid basically in high school starts to grow elf ears because he's be reaching a certain age and they found, finds out that his family is from like Irish, you know, whatever descendants and that they were like leprechauns and his grandfather or so, I can't remember if it's his grandfather or great grandfather or something owns like a brewery and then they find out that there's like a pot of gold and there's this evil fucking elf that's trying to like take it from him and all this shit. It's actually really good and they have what, to deal what with movie is basketball. This? It's called The Luck of the like Irish. A- analogy that's, for that's, puberty. That's like a basketball movie to me. Right, so the way they determine <laughs> who gets the pot of gold is with a basketball <laughs> game at the end. It's kind of stupid. But yeah, like, this is the best movie, and the more you talk about I it, I'm like, what the, the fuck? The best <laughs> Disney Channel original movie is what I was saying. Again, they're going to be fucking trash, uh, but this is the best of the trash. It's on top of the trash pile is the Lucky the Irish. I had to pee. I'll be back. He's, he, I guess oh. he's, he's not listening to the song. Oh, I mean, fuck oh baby bladder Randall over here. <laughs> All, right, geez. All right, but what we can do is there is a top 10 this week because obviously this movie came out on a weekend, on a Friday. So we can kind of put it up against the top 10 or box office that week in the top 10. Obviously, this movie's not going to be in it because it's not a box office movie. It's not making money. You can't go fucking pay for it. Obviously, you can... We can You'd put it to... in a place and time, is what you're telling us. Right, exactly. But you, you would have to pay for it in reality, right? If you're paying for cable or satellite at the time, you're paying to watch this. You're just, yes. if so facto, you're not paying uh, for it. If so facto, I'm your boss. <laughs> <laughs> I got some shackles in the back. Just joking. <laughs> no, really, I got them. Uh, Funny you, story okay, just came shut out up today. Help me with a sale. <laughs> <laughs> Funny story just came out today. I read that uh, Vince Vaughn has written a sequel to Dodgeball, and Justin Long has said, look, we've talked about it with Ben Stiller, and he's just apprehensive about coming out with a sequel because of how, how well-regarded Dodgeball is, and probably, yo, we did a sequel to Zoolander, and it was fucking trash, right? That's a thing, too, man. I, I, I guess it was Seinfeld that I heard a quote from. That where you, you you just don't want to trash something that's so gold. I don't know what exactly what it is, but that's one of those movies that are just so cult classic. If you come out with the second one, I don't want to. That first one is so fucking good. I don't want to look at it through like shitty eyes. Again. And that's the <laughs> you know thing. What I'm and I, I've talked about this about Adam Sandler movies, right? Like if Happy Gilmore came out today, would it be funny and would it be good, or is it just our nostalgia glasses going? Well, this fucking movie's amazing, you know. I mean, a movie, it has to come out when it came out for it to be good, you know? Well, that's like, what I'm no saying. there's no way that like, comes out to be. Adam Sandler is a joke today because all his movies are the same and whatnot. But <clears throat> are they a joke because they're the same? Or is it literally we've grown out of the humor that made those movies that good and we're just saying, oh, well, those movies are actually good, but in reality, it's the same jokes in the same humor. The- we just have grown out of it. I think the the humans have grown out of his humor. Like I think that was a very specific genre that is no longer popular. I agree. There's only one movie that I think if it was made again today would be just as successful and just as good because there's nothing dating it besides cell phones and shit and Big Daddy. Exactly. What uh, in that movie besides, you know, Rob Schneider being kind of racist and playing I don't even know what what, what he, you give him all the easy ones. He pop, he pop anonymous. Like I don't even like. Is he Indian or I don't even know what he's trying to be. But beyond that, what in that movie is like potty humor, right? Like what in that movie is? It's obviously a dated movie now. And making what, weird voices and shit. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's not doing that. This soap is better. Like he's not doing that. Like, <laughs> I think I think Stop Happy Gilmore has a swan. chance, and Big Daddy was def would definitely be my choice of if I had to release a uh, Adam Sandler movie in today's day and age. That would be it, hundred percent. There's nothing I, I, better. Be to Big me Daddy, in. yeah. Even Mr. Deeds holds up a little bit. There's some jokes in there where you're like, mm, "That's kind can of- I change your socks?" Mm. Right. <laughs> no, Daddy, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, Daddy, no. No, Daddy, no. Were you using the foul language? In front of the ladies. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> takes his no, belt like, off. 
I'm assisting you with your sock change. Yeah, that movie, uh, it's... Is this uh, Hawaiian Punch? <laughs> that's Hawaiian Punch? <laughs> that movie just has a lot of good stuff to it. And, and, and again, what we talked about earlier in the episode, it's wholesome. There's just not a lot of wholesome stuff that's coming out. Even looking at Adam Sandler movies, the only wholesome movie I've seen him come out with in the past, I don't know, 10 years is Hubby Halloween. He's a have you watched his, his, his serious movies that have come out? He's done a good line of a few serious movies. Yeah, like a fucking Uncut Gems. Amazing. Uh, what was that basketball one that just came out? The really basketball good. one was really yeah, good. That was good. Yeah. It, is it wholesome, though? Yeah. Mm, yes, but it's not. I don't think but that, that's the point. But in a serious way, if that's what you're asking. That's it's what not I'm trying saying. to teach you a lesson. Right. It's I not, think that's these wholesome not what it's movies, trying to do. These wholesome movies that we describe are like at the end, they're like you're, you're trying to relate or it's like teaching you how to be a human, you know? But that a movie human. has a really good ending, and it kind of teaches you how to be human. But that's not like a main focus anymore at the end of movies. A lot of movies aren't trying to slap you with the happiness ending. The 90s and the early 2000s were nothing but happy endings, right? You could maybe count on your hand shitty endings. Right, you're absolutely Up until yeah. 2002, you know? That's like everyone... No one wanted to see a shit. That's what I'm saying. We've, we've grown out of it. Like, there's, like, we've grown out of that. Cinema has grown up. You don't need happy endings all the time. Even I, though I, I feel- crave it. Yeah, I feel like once, <laughs> once the I fucking, like, I fucking need it. I can't stand feeling like this. <laughs> well, no, what I'm saying is, I feel like the problem is that you have these movies in the early 2000s that were like, we need grittiness and realness, so let's make depressing, rainy type movies. You know, like Rain, Rain on Me, or like fucking Batman Begins and stuff like that. We're like, okay, we're, we're rebooting all this stuff and we're making it sad and angsty and like whatever, which is cool, but not everything has to do that. And not everything has to now be rebooted from the 2000s to then make it even more angsty. And I'm, I'm going to shit on Batman for a second here because you make an unbelievable trio of movies that are realistic and gritty and like set in reality and it's bleak. Then... And I love this movie. The newest Batman movie is even bleaker and realer and grittier. But I fucking love it. But what I'm saying is, maybe I want a 90s Batman movie with fucking nipples on the goddamn chests. And like being stupid and over the top. And Arnold swooping back in as <laughs> Mr. Freeze going, time to chill. Like, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it's going through, I think we're going through phases. Like, I think it's people are going to be wanting. They just want something new, and eventually that's going to be the new thing. I feel. I just don't. Know. Is that the next new thing? Do you get so serious that you just can't. You don't want to be so serious anymore. Why well, so maybe. serious? Yeah, well, I mean, well, look at like <laughs> Black Adam that just came out. Like that movie's serious. And Did you see the that? Rock, I, I don't want to. I really don't want to see it. Like I, I don't either. What movie? Nothing, Black Adam. Black Adam. Nothing I think I'm is, over the Rock. That's oh, what I'm bitch, saying. You said you saw it. You didn't fucking like it. Fuck you. I'm gonna watch it. I'll let you know if it's good or not. Okay. Don't trust I, my word, though, because it's look, probably going to be good to me no matter what. I love Dwayne DeRock Johnson. I love that man. I'm over death. his shit. But he has it. not. He's, he's doing a lot. He's doing a lot. Exactly. He, exactly. Stop making me feel bad, you fuck. <laughs> he has not <laughs> Calm down. done anything. Sleep in like the rest he, of us. He has not done anything where he has changed himself. He's the same character in every fucking movie. He's either serious Dwayne or funny, joking Dwayne. Cover up right? that big-ass forehead. <laughs> but that's I, the thing. That was not a, a fan. good line. Okay. Not a fan. Not anymore, Shit. at least. I want range. I just what see I too want. much of I him. want Dwayne to fucking drop 60 pounds of muscle and do a fucking Adam Sandler rain on me or uncut gems that or man, something. That man hasn't been off of roids in fucking 25 years. I would, like, as much as There's it probably no is way. roids, how awesome would it be if it wasn't? And he's just like, I'll wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, the so if you hours. look at his his body structure when he was a teenager, he has the frame yeah. where it might not be boy. roids. But he's like, he's definitely roiding, dude. There's no fucking, he was a, there's no him way. At, him at 16 was fucking ridiculous. He's as big as you at yeah, 16. His, his fucking shoulders are probably the size, the size of my wingspan. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're ridiculous. If you want to see what he would look at, look like without roids, look at his grandfather. Him, uh, him and I are the same height, or, or, or so his dad, fucking, fucking Rocky Maivia, or Peter Maivia. They're they just look fucking like strong men, like big boys with meat. He's on, a, you know what I mean? Samoan, he right? Looks, he's a Samoan. Yeah. He's a fucking. He's got the frame to hold oh, yeah. up that body, but it's definitely oh, roids that packed on the muscle. Oh yeah, sure. So, all right, getting back to what we were talking about. So, top ten that week, Randy. You went and pissed. 
what we're doing is even though I'm the good. movie didn't come out in theaters, it still came out on a weekend. So we can look okay. at it and look at the top 10 that week. So number 10, a movie that we've actually covered on this podcast, Saving Silverman. Ooh, right up Steve's alley. I know Randall has not seen it. I have not. Do you it's like Jack Black? Great. It's great. It's great. I love Jack Black. Do you like Steve Zahn? Who's that? I don't, I don't know. I don't. Oh, fuck, I don't. Fuck, fuck you. <laughs> Do you know... Uh, um, why am I I'm looking it up right now. You know, I you should know. know his name because I love it. American Pie. Have you seen American Jason Pie, Biggs. Randy? Jason Biggs, yeah. Got you, buddy. Don't worry. Okay, I'm looking at the movie. cast right now. Have you seen Amer- any American Pie movie? Of course I have. Okay. All of them? Um, like the main I four? It. I don't I think I've seen it. like the newer the, the newer ones. Well, so Not only, newer, but you there's know. There's four ones that you need to watch. You know, it's obviously one, two, three, and Reunion. Or sorry, one, two, American Wedding, and Reunion. Uh, those would be the only movies to see. Uh, I'm sure there's some I've missed. Okay, whatever. Number nine. Duh. Castaway. Ooh. Okay. Wilson! That was a that was a cinematic kind of marvel, I believe. That, that was one of the bigger movies of the '90s to me. Talk, talk about range, In you know. Like if you're gonna fucking show your range, that's a fucking movie right there. Oh my god! Like if you, think the about whole the whole fucking thing is a pitch. monologue, and then you not even acting, but feeling realistic. It was amazing. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. The pitch for that movie is it's one dude on an island acting for fucking an hour and a half, and then there's you know 30 minutes of other stuff for the beginning and the end. Uh, it's going to be entertaining. Come on. Come. You can, who's who's, who's going to be the guy? Tom Hanks. The, I'm in. The dialogue is, there's barely any in the whole movie, right? So, like, it's, right. if you were to read a script for something, it's probably obscene and long. Like, it's just all this blocking, is, yeah. Yeah, this is probably, like, four pages. Five, <laughs> five pages. Like, it's it's ridiculous. The scene in where he's cutting or doing something, he's sawing something, and he keeps looking back at Wilson, the volleyball, and, like, kind of, like, looking at him, like, what the fuck are you saying? Fuck you, man. Like, you need to shut <laughs> yeah. your fucking mouth. And there's nobody there. No one's saying anything. It's such a good scene. And then he finally then, just starts yelling at him, and he, like, throws him away. It's amazing. Yeah, if you get a chance, Rand, well, this is a good one for Randall to watch, but the fucking, at the end, you he did such a good job that you're you're sad about Wilson. Like you're fucking Oh my god. Oh my god, yes. Y- you know what I'm saying? That's what he know you know you know how to act. Like as soon as that part happened, I was like, okay. This is when le- you this make legitimate. me care for a volleyball, you have done <laughs> yeah. the best job of acting any single person could ever do. Tom Hanks, you deserve all the praise in the world. And if you got an Oscar for that cool, you probably didn't, but you deserved it. So good. So good. Well said. Uh, well said. Number the eight. Part where he oh, he has to hit he has to hit his tooth out. Uh, you remember that part? And he, he does skate. it with a he does it with a ice skate. Uh, he puts an ice skate up to his jaw and hits it with a fucking rock. Mm. Uh. Randy, I know you haven't seen this movie. You fucking need to watch it. I haven't seen it. No. Man works for FedEx. That's all you need to know. <laughs> I brought you your package. <laughs> Dude, what, what was in the package? I don't, I don't fucking remember. It's just this like uh, the beginning of the movie. I always remember that. seeing like it was like a Nokia fucking phone or something. I do, yeah, I remember like seeing a it was satellite, satellite phone, satellite or phone, or phone like that. and he could have just opened it in full battery. Like motherfucker, could have got <laughs> off this rock. Whatever, he made a bitchin' boat and got his ass out of there. I hope he made another Wilson. That's all I care about. Yeah, number eight, <laughs> Chocolat. Ooh, Johnny Depp, a love Indeed. story. Yeah. For, the <laughs> age, for the ages. Okay, it was an okay movie. Uh, I watched it once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was they? cheesy as fuck. Che- like cheesecake with chocolate? Chocolat. Mm. <laughs> Kiss number my seven. Ass. <laughs> number seven, The Wedding Planner. Ah, uh, yes, great movie. I actually, I feel phenomenal like movie. Jennifer Lopez, right? Uh, I think so, yeah. yeah so, it and then it was Adam Sandler. Or no, no, what, no, no, no J Lo and Matthew wrong, McConaughey. Wrong, 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 wrong. I'm thinking wrong movie. My bad. My bad. Matthew McConaughey. All right. I was thinking right, of Wedding right. Singer. Wedding Singer is a great movie, which I'm still waiting for Wally to pick on this show. Uh, I feel like he would be the one to pick it, so I have. <laughs> I love that fucking movie. <laughs> cool. 
Oh, your pick's coming up here soon. Not today. Today is my pick, motherfuckers. I genuinely thought you picked this. I did. Mm. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have yeah, thought Randall picked this. I threw well, it out there after he said Halloween Town. I was like, "Well, if you're gonna go Disney Channel movie, because I remember the movie, right? I haven't seen the movie in so long." Mm. And Number here we six, are. Traffic. Oh, is that with? Uh, I'm walking here. No, what the that's, fuck. That's what is really what is <laughs> Traffic was a movie that came out in 2001, obviously, because we're talking about it. I remember it was a big cast. It was okay. Uh, I don't Hold remember on, what much about am I it. Thinking? You're thinking of. Uh, yeah, I'm no, walking I'm not here. Happy. Hold on. Oh, I typed in traffic on Google, and that's exactly what I. Uh oh, it's traffic in your area. Traffic in, your area. <laughs> <laughs> it's traffic in his area. I've never seen. Traffic. Traffic. I've never heard of it. I think it won I a like lot you're of just thinking Benicio something. del Toro, Michael Douglas, yeah. Mike Douglas, Mike <laughs> Douglas, <laughs> Catherine Zeta Jones, Don Cheadle. <laughs> Like I said, there's a lot of people in that movie, and I remember it being a big deal when it came out, and then nobody talks about it. Maybe there was just a bunch of people stuck in traffic. Like, what a movie. I, I, oh, I that know. could be a good movie. Where it's people start going drama crazy film. because they're in a fucking traffic jam, and then they start just murdering everybody because they can't get out of this traffic jam. And finally they find out that like at the front of the traffic jam, it was one dude just pissing off a ledge, and they couldn't <laughs> wait for him to finish pissing, and they murdered everybody. Steve, we need to get you a psychiatrist. <laughs> Something. <laughs> oh, you need to make you need to make sure I got the right connections. So when I make all these scripts that I keep talking about, I can get them in the right hands and we can make some fucking movies. <laughs> Number five, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Jesus Christ! Oh, fuck, Randy doesn't like know I've what that movie that is. Too. No, I feel like I've seen that. The we talked about this on one of the episodes. Names being yeah. dropped right now. Great movies, big movies. That's a cinematic marvel also. Like, that whole mm -hmm. fucking, the, the, chore the scenery, the choreograph. Great movie. Great movie. No, great. It says that one's from 2001, or 2000. Well, this is the top ten that weekend. It could have been in the top mm. ten still because that mm. movie yeah, was you're a right. monster. It was only February, so it could have been. Okay. Number four, Never Sweet November. Never heard of it in my life. Nope. Not me. I didn't look it up. All right, top three that week in no particular <laughs> order. We got Hannibal in its second week. We got Down to Earth in its first week. And Recess schools out in its first week. The fuck is Down to Earth? I don't know Down it to has Earth Chris is Rock either, in but it. I can't, I, can't, I can't look any of this up. I'm not you can't look it up. So Down to you're Earth, right, Chris right, Rock right. Uh, dies, goes to heaven, and they realize it wasn't his time yet. So they have to get him another body, and they end up putting him in the body of this, like, fat, rich, white dude. And he <laughs> awesome. ends up, like, going into, like, the inner cities and, like, helping them out and, like, becoming this really popular dude with all these, like, black communities. And then his time's up in that body, and he ends up dying in the body, and then they have to find him another body, and he comes back as some other dude. It's a pretty good movie, actually. That sounds like a cool premise, if I'm being honest. It was, I have it no idea. Bad. Yeah, this one's a fucking shot in the air. Like, what was the third one? Uh, Recess schools out. So the TV show Recess, oh, it's a yep. Disney Channel show yep, that yep, came yep, out with yep, an yep. actual movie. I have so, no idea. I, I have. Li this is the first time I've literally no fucking clue. Sweet. So we're gonna go to Wally first. Then remember, it was Hannibal, <laughs> uh, Down to Earth, and Recess schools out in any order you want. I'll go think. Hannibal, Down to Earth, and uh, Recess. Okay, Randall. I'm going. I'm going. Oh uh, wait. Was Recess in theaters? Yes, this is all in theaters. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm going to do Hannibal Recess Down to Earth. All right, it is as follows. Number one, Hannibal. Number two, Down to Earth. Number three, Recess. Wally, not knowing, getting it. See, that's what I'm saying. This is what I need to do every fucking time, man. Fucking <laughs> Just, I have no idea. Just throw them out there. Just not yep. Know. <laughs> I like it. All right, <clears throat> the Rotten Tomatoes score, the Roddy T's, the Tomatometer. What do we oh, think fuck. the critics and audience gave this movie? I'm going to preface this, that's right, with uh, the critics gave it nothing because there's one review on Rotten Tomatoes for this movie critics-wise, and it's actually a good review, but it's not enough to generate an actual score. So there are over 5,000 reviews for the audience on this, so we can just do the audience score and the IMDb score. So I'm going to go to Wally again first. What do we think the audience on Rotten Tomatoes gave this out of 100%? Uh, fucking 30. 30, Randy. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, no. I don't know if there's like a bunch of Disney Channel loving people. Like, this is weird to me. You know, like, I'm just going to go, I'm going to go with 57. 57 he's going with. All right, audience score, a 76. <laughs> I think Wally's it face says it all right movie, Walter. Mm-hmm. So what, he, did Jen- what did Jennifer's body get on Roddy T's? A lot lower you're, than that. I'll look it up right now. I got it. It don't was worry. like in the 50s, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, but what? I, I, don't, I don't agree with a 76, but I agree Roddy that this T. movie is a Fuck lot... Me. Fuck you is a lot better than people on the surface would be like, oh, it's a Disney Channel movie. This fucking piece of shit. You got a 46. 46. And the tomatometer. That makes perfect sense. for the audience. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. That's right. I don't understand. So this is one of those things where it's like you get to these movies that could be like a lot of sentimental value in this. So I feel like a lot of people come in and they're like, oh, yeah, this is is awesome. I love this one. I love this one. I love that one. But you look at other movies that are like really good, like movies that are good. They probably have scores that are less than this, so it's really confusing to me when you get on the whole Rotten Tomatoes Yeah, so the way I look at it is a movie like this, only people that like this movie or fucking hate this movie are going to go out and review it. Now, uh, a Disney Channel movie like this, people are probably thinking, oh, it's not even on Rotten Tomatoes, so I'm not even going to worry about it. So only people that absolutely love this movie are going to go out of their way to review it or put something out on there. So that's why you got to kind of take a grain of salt of Rotten Tomatoes because only newer and big movies do you have people going on there to actually review them. So if you're looking at older movies that are regarded as really good movies, I mean, it's mostly people hunting that movie down to then review it or just say, everybody's wrong and this is why because I have an opinion and I'm the only person that matters. Zero out of ten. Down to earth. Zero out of ten. <laughs> It's weird. It really is. So IMDb score, what do we think that is? Out of 10, so you can do points, something, whatever. It's got to be lower. Even. It's got to be lower. There's what no you, way. What are you thinking? <laughs> I'm going to go five. Five even. That's what I was going to say, too. A five. I'm sitting it with is. the 50s. 50s, okay. It is as follows. A 6.5. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know about six five. What the fuck was that? We've seen a lot of six fives that are like, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck? I don't. <laughs> I, this is a hard one to me, right? It's hard to really. Is this like the whole comedy movie? idea that we had, where it's like they're getting judged in their own category of like kids Disney Channel movies? Are they in That's, their own? Okay. You think, think this is their own you're, category? You're bringing up a really good point. Is this? skews the scale a little bit because people go, well, it's a Disney movie. I mean, it's going to be shit. Ah, seven. You know what I mean? Like, people aren't going to critique this as hard because, well, yeah, Disney Channel probably threw $1,000 at them and said, we got all the camera equipment already and I'll we'll take some pictures of them feet and we're good, you know? God, so bring up the feet. <laughs> I'm, tired, I'm tired of hearing about feet. This man has feet trading cards. <laughs> <laughs> Give me one of those all, long toes all for with, that short fucking all thing. All with right movie there. titles from the the Disney Channel era and the the picture of the actors on the other side of the card. Oh my god! Double <laughs> trouble. <laughs> the thirteen got a full years. house. <laughs> Mom's dating a vampire or something. I don't fucking smart house. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who was your you favorite would. character? You would be the only <laughs> one. Shut up, shut up. Who was your favorite character in this movie, Wally? You gotta pick well, some. I like the I like the younger brother, the young young kid. The, oh, the, that's the, solid the, pick. L- little comedic relief, you know. He was kind of solid funny. pick. Get a couple quips. I yeah, like him. I do like the part where they're just like, "Why you always got to come to me?" You know, and it's like, "Yeah, I know, I know." They're always interrupting him, trying to make the perfect shit. It's yep. it's awesome. I he's like trying him. to yeah. He's timing himself, rebuilding that top end. And he can't yeah, finish yeah. it because everybody keeps fucking whatever. Oh, and I do like the part where he's like, or I don't know if it was his older brother or him saying to the, the Rene Cartier guy about like, well, we can rebuild it or get this. And he's like, no, I'd rather somebody who knows what they're doing touch it. And you're like, man, fuck this guy. I'll, I'll beat that Frenchman's ass. I will <sighs> take a croissant. Or Spanish. He was beat Spanish. His ass. No, I thought he was French because he said he was going over to Paris or something, right? Well, maybe, but I thought they said mentioned him racing something Spanish related too. So well, maybe he raced know. in Spain or something. Who knows? Look, 
It's a movie from the Disney Channel. Did they really fuck him? Movie? That's what we think. <laughs> fuck that guy. <laughs> the guy was Ran- a fucking chatch. He's a chew. <laughs> Randy, who is your favorite character? Uh, I'm probably have to be Talon. He was like he was one of the only guys that was like willing to help and wasn't making fun of her. Him, it. It. When she got there, it got there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's you know a great. Mean? That's a great point. You're right because like, everybody is literally staring at her or making fun of her or just saying this or that and again yeah, it, it leads like, to don't, the don't, don't worry about it right and you know what what a good guy now did he have ulterior motives of like hey this dude's chilling with all these chicks for some reason like maybe he can help me out with this girl yeah but then it blossoms into love and they are motorcycle fucking or something like that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. i feel like that's a, that's, that's that's a hard thing to like really you got to be in the mood to do that. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, there's there's a ground right next to you. You know, right. <laughs> but the, like, thrill like, of the ride. Put this shit on the stand. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I Dude, would be like, let's 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 this do this while riding. That's what I'm saying. You know like, what I'm saying? I'm driving yeah. and going forwards, and you're looking backwards, and you're yeah, getting it. Yeah, that's how you you fucking die quick. <laughs> you die quick, quick, quick. But yeah, let's be awesome. real. That obituary better say died while fucking on a motorcycle and everybody would be like all right yeah it's pretty cool <laughs> i'm just trying to envision the whole thing now and the girls she's done she's getting she's fucking dead. pancakes her fucking head you're, is gone <laughs> you're smacking the back of like a like a, a windstar van like a ford windstar van she's <laughs> getting flat. smushed what, what if that like we found them in the autopsy his dick was still inside her fucking her Oh well, I wouldn't. <laughs> Depending on I don't how think it goes. it's still fucking at that point, but the, I think, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> how, how cool would that I, be, man? It could like, be you there, and your dick is still inside. Like that. That's cheers, bro. <sighs> it's definitely cool. <laughs> it's definitely, <laughs> it's definitely a cool story. Cool. But but you gotta be the, like the fucking the guy working at the the morgue. Like I gotta attach this for this. Just fucking throw it in his pants. It doesn't matter. Pulling out a wiener. <laughs> if your wiener, if you die with a boner, does it stay bonerized? No, the blood obviously goes back <laughs> way to second. Because that guy's, that guy's gonna pull out a I'm fucking looking set. I'm That's, looking it so, up. So, guys, so, hold on. You bring up a very good point because if you die, your blood stops pumping, right? So does it not it go anywhere anymore? Does your like does the blood your not come back out? Circu- well, that's what I'm saying. Your body's circulating blood, right? And the way the the wiener gets engorged is all your blood goes to you it. not so use if that you word again? stop <laughs> engorged so what i'm Ugh. saying is if you stop pumping that blood and it's just staying in there essentially it's going to stay up yeah yeah see that's what i'm saying i got questions i need okay so i got i got i got three answers here two of them are no one of them is yes and it's Damn. called parapism Death erection. And De- oh. rap- death rapper? erection. Hold on, hold on. New yeah. band. Death, death erection. erection. <laughs> Just death erection. Yeah. That is fucking solid. Mm. That's the best thing I've learned in weeks. So it is. So you die with a fucking hard on. Parapsum. 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 Parapper the rapper. Per- <laughs> Kick. Punch. It's all in all the mind. mind. If you, you want to test me, I'll tell you the things, things that teach you. Show to beach. Do you remember that? Do you remember that fucking PlayStation disc, Steve? That yep, had the, that the demo not the actual disc? game, but it was like the. Yep. See, you, I would you play the, the shit too. out of that demo disc because I think it had Metal Gear on it as well. I yep, had like yep. uh, not 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 uh, ATV, but there was a Snow Cross game like ATV. Uh, it might have had Siphon Filter and some other things on it. I played the shit out of that one. So good. So good. Anyways, so now that I know, I have to make sure I know, I have to plan my death around a boner now. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, I don't. It's embarrassing if you just got a softy and be like looking at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that guy is going to be like, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like this guy's. This poor guy. He doesn't have the smallest penis I've seen. But, you know, like. (laughs) (laughs) Imagine coming up to a scene and be like, whoa, hold on a second. This man. Everybody, round of applause. Round of applause for this guy. He's dead. He's not going to know it, but he's got a death erection. How do you have enough blood for the rest of his body? (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's why he's dead. (laughs) He obviously didn't have enough to control both parts. All right, Randy, I'm I'm, going to need you to look up something else. Can you (laughs) die? Let's do it. Hold on. Can you die from too much blood pumping into your penis? Too much blood pumping. 
Okay. Think about that for a second, right? Like, it was all your blood from your body that you need. It's just like, nah, we're going to the dick right now. And it kills you. Can you pump, can no, you pump too much blood into it to where, to where it, like, fucking pops? Like, not, oh, I mean, maybe. <laughs> maybe. It explodes. I'm getting, a lot of, I'm getting a lot of how to improve your blood flow to your penis. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I love the fact that Randy's search history is just going to be all dicks right now. <laughs> His girlfriend's going to sit down and be like, what the fuck is going... Randy, Randy, get over here. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. It was for the Oh, podcast. well, if you do get too much blood in your dick, you can um, cause some serious complications. I can tell you, I can tell you this. Brain Look, aneurysm. So, I can so tell your you boy, from personal experience. <laughs> your, boy, your boy over here has been mildly adventurous at times. And I had a sweet girl... That was like sweet, sweet. Girl. Wanted to have some crazy, some crazy time. And she, I got some, I got some of those fucking a big bottle of pills that had a really ridiculous name. And I the it rhino said to take, horn. It said to take four of them, and I took four of them, and it was cool. It was great. Felt pretty normal. Afterwards, my head was fucking thorough. My brain was fucking about to pop out of my fucking Cause skull. Because it, it says if you if you have an erection too long, it takes away the oxygen to the rest of your body, which is. Not yeah, good. It, fucked up. It was Jibba. it was good for a while, but that fucking that headache afterwards was not fun. Not your boy fun was at spinning, all. spinning. Yeah, I had I, no oxygen dude, in my was, brain. It was all in my dick. Yeah, dude, I was running around with his hammer for a while. It was, it was what do I do with sl- it? Slugging it out. It's fucking mallet. <laughs> Just, it's not going away, guys. No, no, but I did. In all seriousness, I did take four of those fucking things, and it didn't feel good. <laughs> It did not feel good at all. <laughs> but at the time, it was a fun time. I also took uh, Viagra as a teenager and went to the pool. How was that? <laughs> Hell, there was four or five of us dudes that did it. And it Were was hilarious. Fighting? Everybody was kung fu fighting. I remember trying to test the theory, because I'm a man of science, if I belly flopped, if it would still hurt, because I had a boner. What and a, you know what? what? It didn't. Uh, yeah, because you're piercing the water. <laughs> it broke the water? Before, it broke yeah. the water before? It broke yeah, the, the yeah, surface Yeah, that's a legit yeah. thing. Look at so us doing science. Tuck, you didn't even tuck it. You just let Oh, it, no. You just let no, your boy as a kid was just I had big old ding-dong flailing about. <laughs> On Steve shoulders. probably contest. I was doing that all throughout high school. Just, woohoo, look at my penis. <laughs> as a young child, Walter always felt the need to show everyone his penis. <laughs> he sounded like the Discovery Channel guy. <laughs> Sir Walton Attenborough here. As we enjoy our Walter in his natural habitat, we can see that his penis is just out. (laughs) Oh, and it's back on someone's shoulder. (laughs) The woman looks and is very astonished at the size, but also frightened at the thought. All right, so my favorite character in this movie, and I'm going to bring it back to this, uh, what we're talking about, is the mom. Jesus. I love oh, the mom so in this movie. a good pick, too. She's the what? perfect mom. Perfect mom. I love the fact she that is. at first she is like a little bit like, oh, we can't, no, no, we're not going to do this. You know, and she even talks to herself like, you're not going to. You're not going to go out there. You're not going to tell her, you know, just fold your laundry and just worry about you. And then all of a sudden she's just out there like, we're going to fucking do this. Let's fucking do it right. And let's go and get it. And I'm like, yes, yes, mom. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Like it's perfect. You want somebody in your corner as a parent. And even when the dad comes back and everybody's pissed off and she's she's just like, like, what would you Right. She was like, explain your daughter or whatever, and he's like, he's like, gets along with everybody, and she's like, well, why don't you listen to what you just said? Exactly, right? And and he, she's just like, you know, fuck you, buddy. Let her do whatever. Like, you're going to let your our son do it, but she can't? Why not? Why not? And then the dad sits down with the ice cream and is like, looking at him like, am I a hypocrite or whatever? And like, the kid's like, if that's good, then no. But if that's bad, then yeah. Like, I was like, good for that. <laughs> good for that kid. Nailed it. Nailed yeah, it. Sure. All right, obviously... We're getting to, do you have a least favorite character? I'm assuming mm-hmm. you know who it is, but go for a while. Fucking dad, that piece of shit. All right, no, I hate that Randy. fucking French guy. That French, French guy can suck a ween. He can I suck a, too. he can suck a, uh, uh, what did we say? If there's a anything I hate boner? is fucking pompous asshats. That's like my, that's like, the no. Di- he can they, suck the death that. erection. 
<laughs> the death, the death erection. <laughs> Suck my the death erection. Parapism. <laughs> what was it called? Parapper. Parapper. The rapper. Death parapism. erection. I'm just gonna type that up. Let's see who comes up. Send that to someone. Be like, hey, you're a parapper. Whatever. And be like, huh? Parapism. Parapism. You're a parapism. And they got to look it up. And they're like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? What a death erection. What a burn. <laughs> what a what a deep burn. <laughs> what a deep. You, you need some sob for that. It's a deep burn. Uh, yeah, my, my least favorite character is definitely the dad as well, until the end when he yeah. comes around. But, like, yeah. you got to think, like, again, we talked about it. He was being a little guarded with his own feelings and whatever. And, I mean, that's human. That's, like, real writing. That's something that's deep for me for a fucking Disney Channel original movie. It didn't need to go that hard it, into emotional fucking shit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but it yeah. did, and I'm glad it did because people watching this movie at that time could have been like, "Hey, my dad's a dick too. Maybe he's got some shit going on." Hey, dad, you got some deep emotional problems you want to talk about? And the dad's like, "Fuck off, son. I yes, I do. Oh my god." <laughs> yeah, that's probably not how that would pan out if I asked my dad. <laughs> you never know. No. You never know. Somebody's like needs that person to talk to, and then one day, like it's your son, and he's just like, "Hey, man, I feel you." It's not your um, fault. It's not nah, your I've, fault. I've, and he's just... No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the one that's, like, messaging my dad. I'm like, you fu you're old. I'm like, you're old. <laughs> Stop doing Stop, stupid like, shit. Stop being an asshole. You're fucking 73. Sit down. Yeah, yeah. You had fucking 10 daughters, you know? Ten. If, if you dip out now, you old piece <laughs> of shit, then that's my job. <laughs> uh, you're spent, boy. Sit down. <laughs> Take a fucking break. Yes. Do we have a favorite part or scene in motocrossed, Walter? Oh. Ooh. Uh, here, come back to me. Let me think about it for a sec. So Randy. Go first. I'll go think about favorite it. part or scene? I'm going to start really making these cheat sheets for I mean, you, goddammit. You need to make these cheat sheets. I'm going to make I these really, cheat sheets. I really don't, have I don't questions. Really ha I don't think I have one, but it's like I, I kind of get drawn to that that scene where they're like riding the bikes around in the, and they get to the pond and shit like that. I was like, gotta, "This is fucking, this is so fucking weird." <laughs> that would the stick sun, to me I got a so skin much. thing with my son. I, I can't, I can't take my shirt off. This is yeah. This is so weird. This is so awkward. I think that's what brought me out of the movie the most was that part too. <laughs> it's like the, the whoa, whoa, whoa. my Are you worst scene you don't and my go best with, scene. <laughs> you don't go with your boys to a gorge that's filled with water and jump in and start like playing around and pushing them and trying to push their heads under the water and shit. You don't do that, Wally. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well then you're not a man <laughs> that's gonna, that's gonna no 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 I'd, I'd wrestle with my kid all the time but my kid's a boy that's your but that's your kid not pretending that's different. to be, It'd be like so so if like yeah, you and boy. me went to the water and we started wrestling in the water yeah yeah, yeah 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 no i i can yeah. definitely see wally being like hey randall fuck you and just dunk <laughs> i definitely <laughs> push you in but yeah. i probably wouldn't jump in with you <laughs> yeah <laughs> He took his shirt off all sexily, too, and I'm not saying that in a... Sexily? Is that a word? You know, yeah, like, yeah. the way not he takes it, it off, he's like, oh, you look like at my scene? body. <laughs> no, like, <laughs> think about it. He takes it off. Well, that like was the whole point. Up. That was the whole point of that scene, was well, her, like, get it. forming an attraction the... towards that guy. Right, like, ooh, look at them Look at them abs that, like, looks like you've been eating some donuts. Like, come on, bro, if you're on a motorcycle, you're gonna be cut. Dean Talon <laughs> was not cut. Old fucking... not, not like I was looking. Take my you, death erection. You sound like you were looking way too take, hard. Take my death erection. <laughs> and get the fucking parapism. Shut up. My favorite part was uh, like the nail polish part where it kind of comes full circle. Where like at first they're making fun they of her them. about you know what's the, you know, for the for the, the the handlebar pump like you know it helps out or whatnot with with the Another vibration. I'm like fucking that's stupid. But again, <laughs> it kind of goes with Story them telling. doing a little bit of research, right? Like, all right, that would makes sense that's kind of a cool whatever and then all of a sudden like he's winning races and being successful and comes back and everybody's got nail polish on like i was like all right that's fucking cool oh Look, no if you, if you take these penis pills you'll get first plate <laughs> running around with headaches up. afterwards <laughs> i feel like though most of the people that were painting their nails it would have just been all black paint like let's be real in 2001 emo's like a thing they're fucking motocross riders. Probably half of them would already have uh, their nails painted black. I agree. 
Where are you? <laughs> it's your guys' fucking band. Shut up. You know you play a couple one of those. What was with the country don't. costumes? What the fuck was that? Who's You don't like that? They were cowboys. You looked retarded. <laughs> Specifically. <laughs> I know. Randall in a cowboy thing is not is not a Randall esque outfit. Well no. Wally knows Steve looks great in a fucking cowboy hat. Steve can rock a cowboy hat. I think Steve Steve can rock a cowboy hat. Another rock all the other hat. guys I was just wondering what it is you guys like <laughs> Yeah, cowboys would be a great idea. <laughs> Pretty much, like a, it, a brokeback it was, mountain. It was, what the fuck are you guys? That's, what, that's what I felt like. It looked like Jake Gen Gyllenhaal and fucking brokeback mountain. Jake Gyllenhaal. Are you? Well, were, no, you were Steve? Is it more of a function? Like we probably have stuff we can wear. This is probably the one thing we all can wear. So yeah, that was more or the less like okay, what can we do where we can all dress up the same, but yet I can play drums, you guys can play guitar and sing, and it's not like hampered. So our emo band dressed up as cowboys because it's funny because we're a fucking emo cover band dressed up as cowboys. I was uncomfortable. Exactly. You were uncomfortable. I was wearing a fucking cowboy hat trying to not hit my face in the cowboy also, head with my. You were also sticks. wearing one of those. Uh, what's that? What's that thing called? I know you know uh, what it's called. I don't know. It, it, it's not a tie. It has two tassels that go down, and then you like. Oh, uh, like the the actual cowboy shit, like yeah. the yeah, yeah. the Mexican. Yeah. Whatever, whatever that is. Yeah. Whatever. Were we yeah. entertained by motocross? Duh. Yes. Well, sure. I was like, All right, sure. Yeah, I guess. I'm gonna say I was entertained. If I was younger. Movie, well, even even today, like watching it, like I said, with the themes in the movie, I'm still entertained. Now, is it because I watched it when I was younger, and now I'm watching it again, and I'm like, yeah, all right, cool, probably. Uh, but the movie still it, it holds up to me. It feels it feels timeless as well because there's nothing that like dates the movie too much. You know what I mean? Obviously, the cell phones that they're on are older or whatnot, but nothing goes okay. This couldn't happen today because it's in 2001. Like everything just felt fine you know what i mean like they're motocross racing they still do it the same way they're going to a store they're doing this they're having family issues like everything seems the same besides hey we can't reach your dad because he's out doing something and we can't talk to him in well i mean that could also be real if he's going to a different country and he doesn't want to buy a fucking cell phone that can roam and wherever he goes um possibly or he's somewhere that doesn't have service didn't turn on his roaming Son of a bitch, I don't want to pay that. We got no money. We got no sponsorships, God damn it! I'm out here trying to run a business. <laughs> Fucking go to they Europe. Got a, they got a good deal. Do they? With that uh, sponsorship. Oh, oh, yeah, no, definitely at the end, for sure, yeah. yeah. They can hire their own rider and all this other stuff. A 250 yeah. rider. And we got the right guy for it. And what a... what a. Man, let's be real. Is Dean Talon dumb? Yes. Is he dumb to go, I'm not going to be with this giant factory-backed fucking place with this giant trailer I'm gonna say nah I'm gonna go with the homebrew dudes and like start out with them mm, maybe it's a gamble maybe he just wants to be like hey I'm closer to this girl and I can we can do the t thing that we talked about, about riding on the motorcycle. you just did it again didn't you what <laughs> the fucking erection death erection maybe he's trying to get a death <laughs> erection we don't know and it's closer to do that if he's living in the same house we don't fucking know uh, but I don't know. Went out in style, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. I like it. All right. So we're getting to one thing here. I'm going to hit it, but you guys are going to hear it. And Wally shreds. Maybe you can hear it. I don't know. Okay. I heard it. It's okay. To gain some credibility among real-world riders, Disney cast some well-known professional bike Bikers including, but not limited to, Travis Pastrana, Steve Lamson, and Jeremy McGrath. Isn't it amazing how Pastrana did everything, too? Everything. Like, he was great at racing, great at, like, jumping the bike. That's great. That's wild. Well, yeah, that is wild, too. You just talk about it. He started racing. Got I know, racing, I always forget dominated, that. dominated, and then went to freestyle motocross, dominated, then said, fuck that, I'm going to get in a car, started rally car racing, dominated, fuck then went to crazy. NASCAR, and then went, eh, this is fucking hard, and then did not dominate, then got out of that and went back and did everything else and dominated. I'm I right. forgot he raced. Yeah, dude's done pretty much whatever he wants. He's had some pretty gnarly rally car crashes if you want to see some f fucking crazy crashes just google travis pastrana rally car crash and there's a one where he flips like 50 times and his hand literally flies out the window as it like hits the ground there's no way 
He didn't break all the bones in his arms and hands, but somehow walks away like, I'm good. Oh, he's lu- he's lucky as fuck. Also, oh, yeah. isn't it weird when you listen to him like talk? I think he might be on like a genius level IQ. There has to be something. Like I've, I, mad ADD, but like he seems like a really fucking <laughs> smart guy. I agree with that. He definitely has a certain way of talking where you're like, I want to listen to this guy because he seems very genuine and very I know what I'm talking about, but in a way that like is relatable to younger people. Like he's like got that weird you know, like, slang shit that he says, or just like, oh, yeah, I'm goofy, but, like, dude, you're fucking smart. Elena Austin joined the cast with the impression that she would be wearing a wig for her masquerading as a boy. She later found out, much to her dismay, that she would actually be required to cut her hair. I feel like they could have done, like, just a bald cap and then put a wig on. Easily. She got a big head. I don't know. You should go. Maybe, so uh, let's be real. Maybe they tried it, right? They, they, they tried to do that, and it just didn't look right. And they're like, look, cut it. I mean, there's something authentic about a girl with short hair looking kind of manly. If you see a lot of women with short hair, it's like that's a manly trait instantaneously. They could have the yeah. girliest face in the world, but that still that short hair is kind of like, oh, I like a dude. Yeah, I like how as soon as she goes back home, she like dolls up her face like a million times, and she's got all this Quick. makeup on with the sh- yeah. And they're just home, and she automatically goes and throws all that on. You're like, mm, she wouldn't have done that. Yeah, she might have. She's probably like, I'm tired of feeling like a, a boy. I doubt it. She probably went home with fuck you, dad, slammed the door, and just cried into her pillow. <laughs> that too. Yeah. yeah. Coincidentally, Elena Austin would later be cast in the movie Supercross in 2005 as a sideline girl. Also, she was in Moto Kids. Her dad produced Moto Kids and Motocross. So she was in it. She was in. She was in it. She was in the motocross scene. Apparently, like it, it was big deal. Like Moto or Supercross was a big movie when it came out in 2005 and had a whole bunch of people in it. And for her to kind of just be like not really in the movie, but like in the background as one of the sideline girls, like a cool little nod, like hey, 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 cool, all right, that's the fucking girl from motocross. Uh, kind of like a she, she better know how to ride one. You have to. Ride. What's you her name? Have to, at least a little bit. I would I would think if her dad's producing these movies and being all around the motocross scene, she probably could ride a motorcycle. Maybe not as, you know, like good as being. Hitting Did jumps you ride dirt bikes as a kid, Steve? Say that again. Did you have a dirt bike when you were in Canada? Uh, no, we had go karts. A couple of my friends had like uh, four wheelers and stuff like that, which we'd get on and ride. But I was never I was never a motocross guy or like a, a motorcycle guy. Like I've ridden a couple, but I'm never like yeah, let's get on some motorcycles and rip around. Like I, I know you were doing thing. something. I just couldn't remember what it was. I uh, I mean, uh, like bicycles. You know what I mean? Like I would be on those. Like the uh, off. Or, what, what am I thinking? BM, not BMX, but uh, yeah, the bigger like the bigger bicycles that you would the ride. Mountain bikes. Jump. Yeah, mountain bikes. I, that's what I was looking for. Uh, we'd, we'd be on a lot, of, a lot of mountain bikes, hitting some jumps and some trails and stuff like that. We did have a couple BMX bikes. I had one for a while that we would go to my cousin's house and we would, you know, hit some jumps and fucking eat some shit and basically just <laughs> come home with, like, Dude, faces I'd... full of dirt and, oh, my God. I got do this four or five up. scars through the middle of my back for my dad running me over as a kid <laughs> on a dirt bike. What a good story that I'm sure we shouldn't know. <laughs> well, I, I grew up, so I spent a lot of time in the desert as a kid. So my dad raced Baja. So my dad raced dirt bikes. So I grew up with dirt bikes. He raced street bikes too. So I grew up with that shit everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So I had a YZ80. I had a 125. They did a great job. I saw all those bikes in this movie. Like you saw the, the, everything was pretty authentic too. Like Suzuki came up, it was like yellow. Like you would see mm-hmm. Yamaha blue and then Kawasaki was green. You saw yeah. all these bikes come That's up. That's what I'm saying. Like put, you could hear put, the two stroke too, like he yeah. had, which was more prominent back in the day, which I thought was cool. That was pretty That's wild. That's what I'm saying. They put effort into this movie in knowing what they were doing, what they were putting on screen. They were actually like, okay, if we're going to have sounds in the movie, like you said, it's got to be a 250. If we're talking about driving 250s in a different class, like I don't think a movie like this would be like, all right, there's two different classes, so the Dean Talon guy is not going to be riding with her because it doesn't make any sense. But in reality, it does make sense. He's in the higher class with the bigger bike, you know? So that's why they don't ride together and why he was okay training her. Like, it wasn't... He wasn't against her. Yeah, he was just trying to help her at that point. And then at the very end when they were like, okay, well, if you're going to join the team, 
12 races or 12 laps. If you win, you can be a part of the team. They were on the same bike at that point. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, they might have been. But here's the cool thing. This leads to my next fun fact. The Mm -hmm. working title for this movie was the 12th lap. I like that. That wouldn't have been bad. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the reason why it was, although this was a unique interpretation of Shakespeare's The Twelfth Night at the time, it served as later inspiration for the movie She's the Man in 2006, which heavily borrows elements from the movie setting being set in a high school with teenagers using a sport as a catalyst for the plot in soccer, uh, having the Viola character disguise herself as her twin brother rather than in the Twelfth Night Shakespeare story as a completely separate identity, having the Duke Orsino character provide lessons in exchange for helping with courting the Olivia character and flipping the perceived weakness of femininity in the original play into strong support of women competing equally alongside men. Nice. Femininity. Now, if you've never seen Femininity. She's the Man, basically, <laughs> yeah, it's basically the same story besides, <laughs> like, this one dude is going, basically, this girl is playing soccer on this team that's really good. The school says, we're not going to have a, a women's soccer team anymore, so she wants to try out for the, the men's team, and they go, well, you're a girl, haha, <laughs> you fucking suck. So... Her brother, who is going to this other school because he got kicked out of that school, ends up saying, hey, fuck it, I'm going to go with my girlfriend uh, to Europe for the year. Uh, Bye, and not tell your parents. So she ends up taking the identity of her twin brother and going to this school so she can join the boys' soccer team. Uh, And the same basic shit happens. Like, she meets uh, fucking uh, Channing Tatum's in this movie. She meets Channing Tatum. And he's like, hey, I'm really digging this girl. Can you help me out with her? I'll help you out with soccer. And, like, the same thing happens, like, in this movie. Like, it's fucking wild that it's literally beat for beat the same thing, just with soccer instead of motocross. Nice. Yeah. Also, it's uh, not a bad movie. Uh, And if you're looking at it, Nickelodeon is being, you know, a young person's thing. You have Amanda Bynes playing the main character in that movie. And, you know, if so facto, it's kind of the same thing. (laughs) You went off the deep end, didn't she? Didn't the older oh Amanda Bynes? Oh, my God, yeah. She you went uh, off the deep end. Did she? Yeah. Oh. Look it up, Randy. She went off the deep end pretty hard. Check out some of those pictures. I feel pictures. like all of them did. Not all of them. A lot of them. Jennifer Love Hewitt's still going strong. Uh, fucking she, uh, Lizzie she McGuire is great. Oh, yeah. Yo, talk about going strong, boy. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, uh, no, Have you seen wasn't. pictures of that chick? Oh, she my great. God. Looking great. Dude. Take her out on a nice dinner yeah. date. Are you looking at a picture of Amanda Bynes with the fucking, like, uh, piercings through her cheeks and shit? Being yeah, she's, she's done done. Oh, yeah. Oh, you didn't even she see got, that? She got, she got a big old butt. Oh, I still, I still, you remember the skit, the eventually thing? You go, eventually. You remember yep. that? Yep. I still say that all the time. <laughs> uh, Motocross is the 26th Disney Channel original movie. I wonder how many they actually made. I probably should have looked that up, but uh, still 26. And then they were like right in the middle of all these. Like, that's wild. Dude, God, she Hillary is. Duff. She Jesus. Is God. <laughs> you see Hillary Duff? You see those pictures? Yes. Oh my Let God. me tell you, she's, she's fucking top tier. She's like 100% <laughs> top tier for me. Hondi. Doing I'm looking good. up all right. now, too, all right, actually. All right. <laughs> Let's stop oogling over women here for a second. Final oh. decisions out of 10. What would we give this movie? God damn. Go ahead, On Wally. our scale, it can be at whatever scale we want, and we're not. We're going to do Lizzie McGuire after this out of 10, but before this, uh, motocross out of 10, Walter, go. A four. A four? Oh, God damn. Explain yourself. Dude, shit. <laughs> <laughs> The movie was shit. It was Done. Look, not look, that look, bad. look past. <laughs> look past. The acting is fucking garbage, dude. Like I know you guys have that. You're got those glasses on, right? your childhood glasses. But I never seen this before, so I'm getting hit with this acting right out the gate. This horrible Disney acting, <laughs> like from her, her brother, the dad, the mom was probably the best. The mom was, but really everyone's good. this acting is fucking shit. <laughs> The little brother is pretty good. The little brother is funny. 
you need the comic relief, but the acting was terrible. The acting was really bad. Well, I thought like, the, just go the, back. The, the, if you the watch main... this again, just try to yeah. focus on the acting. You're gonna be like, oh, okay. No, <laughs> it's I did. not, it's I did. not it that was, fucking the, good. The acting was fucking terrible. Yeah, the yeah. acting's not a hundred percent good, but it's a Disney Channel movie, so you got to think of that going this, in. I get. This I get, felt I like get. a single episode of a di- uh, like a TV show is from my childhood, and I mean yeah. that's not cinema Marvel. Like in other movies that have been trash for me, I have to like stick to my own ratings. Like this is not <laughs> this is not a, it's not a great movie. It's got a good feel to it. It's got a good message. End. It's got a good that is right, it. A, that a, is a it good wholesome. Me feel to it you're right but i'd love it my movie? son fucking go watch it kid my son you, you need stuff like this in your life go watch it me your as an adult well shaped i don't need this this is fucking <laughs> this is i don't want to bash your guys <laughs> shit but it's not it's not a good it's not a good movie like well shaped my my movie going ability and thinking is well shaped I like it's that. it's decently shaped decently pear-shaped maybe pear-shaped yes i look <laughs> like a lawn dart <laughs> uh, randy what are you giving this out of 10 I'm gonna give it a six and a half. Like I know the acting's terrible, I get it, but nostalgia kicks in at some point, and it just—it's—it's it's not a great movie, but it's—it's—it's it's, it's good. It gets the point across. I can't Dead. hold up a nostalgia factor for this for me. That's probably my yeah. problem. Yeah. But I can't. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, used to I mean, watch it all the time. Yeah, I think that we've talked about this a lot. The rose-tinted colored glasses, having it on, watching a movie that you loved as a kid or growing up, and then watching it again, and you're just like, it's fucking good. Movie's fucking, it holds up. It's great. But if you watch it today, you'd be like, uh, that dude it's sucks. It's garbage. Like, yeah. I, I will agree with Wally to a point that they're, the acting is terrible. But again, it's Disney Channel, right? Like, you know it's going to be terrible. Like, there's nothing going into you going... Well, yeah, I'm going to get fucking Christian Bale ask, acting his ass off in a Oscar-winning role on the Disney Channel. I'm not expecting that. If but. you ask me to put this up against other Disney, if it was just a Disney Channel movie, like, scoring mm-hmm. thing, yeah, it would easily be close to where Randall's was. Like, I easily be close to that. I got you, I got you. But, but we're not doing that, right? So we're doing it as a movie. Yep. You have to put everything out there as okay we're reviewing this movie this is my scale this is the way i look at movies so what do i score this where do i put this if you take out i have to jennifer's fucking jennifer's body a little bit of a higher (laughs) score than this and that movie was fucking (laughs) fucking trash well okay so you bring up a great point in jennifer's body there is great acting amanda seyfried is great in that movie the movie yeah oh yeah oh yeah adam brody is great in that movie he acts his ass off in that movie but the movie's trash megan fox and her toe thumbs is fucking trash in that movie her fucking Mm. dialogue the way here's my thing megan fox acting is worse than disney channel acting to me in that any movie she's been in so 100 percent. this movie gets a point because of that because we're putting it we're doing this right now for me right like the dad in this movie albeit he is a dick He's not bad at being a dick. That fucking French guy, I hate the shit out of that dude. That's because of his acting. You know, uh, the the main brother, I thought was actually pretty decent too. Uh, he didn't stand out as being like crazy good at acting, but he didn't make me go, bro, But why are you in this? You know what I mean? Like he was fine. Like he serviced the role. The little brother, fine, services the role and he makes me laugh and chuckle a little bit. The mom, absolutely amazing and should be in other fucking movies. Don't know why she wasn't bigger than she was. Uh, beyond that, was the not? movie isn't... What was that? Was she not? Uh, she was probably in some other Disney Channel movies or maybe some other like Hallmark shit, but it's one of those... It's hard to get out of that once you're Fucking in that, that those movies, right? Um, but name. the movie for me, on a whole... Right, Wally, say it with me. <laughs> Preparation H. <laughs> it good on the whole. Real, real quick, before, give... you, before you keep going, okay. Randall, look up, look up pictures of Hillary, Hillary Duff's butt real quick. <laughs> Uh, I have. <laughs> All right. Anyway, Steve, go ahead. On the whole, on the whole, I'm going to give this movie um, <laughs> a six, and it gets one point for nostalgia for me because I did grow up watching this movie a lot. I married a woman who was in the motocross scene. Uh, her brother was very big into ATV riding, so she's kind of in that world as well. So I kind of, you know, every time I go to my, to my in-laws' house, there's stuff there still. So, like, it, it's a little bit extra for me. I went to the racetrack here at Bud's Creek all the time when we first started dating. Every year they would have the Bud's Creek Nationals that was actually, you know, the big-time stuff. So walking through the pits and seeing what's going on there and then watching this movie, they get a point for doing their research and actually showing what that life is like and 
you know, people behind the scenes doing what they need to do, factory sponsorships and all this stuff. Like, I feel like the world of the movie is real. The actors in the movie are shit. The story, well, is kind of overdone at this point, is still, I think, well-rounded and, and pretty good. I mean, it teaches a lesson. I feel great after I watch this movie. Like, I feel empowered almost even though i'm not a woman watching it i feel like yes good for you fucking showing the men and fucking you know telling them i can do this and she fucking does you know so good for you steve good for you thank you i just I, the movie makes me feel good that's all i gotta say and what what is what is a movie supposed to do is it it's make it it's to make you feel good watching it depending on the type of movie uh but make you entertained and i was entertained watching this i'm entertained watching it every time even if i'm like that is a shit job at acting bro but it's making me laugh I'm entertained at that, you know what I mean? So, the movie's not good, it's not terrible, it's a Disney Channel original movie, it's one of the better ones, if not the best ones beside The Luck of the Irish, so like I said, 6 out of 10 for me, um, just based on that, but it's better than Jennifer's Body, it's better than a lot of movies that we've actually covered on this channel, being full releases into theaters, I fuck with this movie, I like it, I'll still watch it, <laughs> maybe not every year, but when someone's like, man, Disney Channel had movies, I'll be like, we're watching this fucking one right now. Let's go. What about Brink? Brink was great. One. Was that, uh, a Disney? Brink, that was no, a no. Disney Channel, right? Yeah, yeah. Brink was uh, roller skating. And I wanted to bring up something about yeah, that. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, that's my favorite. It. Yeah, they had roller skating all the time in the X Games, and then it went away. Like, I don't, I don't remember why. Like, it was entertaining to me. Like, they're doing fucking 1360s and shit because they didn't have, like, a board and whatnot. It's good. It's because it's Ben. It's because it's, it's gay. <laughs> well, dirt, yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just, as That's a skateboarder, me. right? Like the whole skateboard community is. If you don't skateboard, well, minus maybe BMX. We've accepted BMXers minus minus the fact that they fuck up all of our like metal coping and shit. But yeah. if you got guys on rollerblades, they're the same as kids on scooters for us for the most part. Fuck them scooters. I don't feel this way personally, but the, the guys are like. You get fucking ragged on. You get snaked. You get cut off. You get called a. Uh, you get called uh, extreme sports slurs. <laughs> it's, Hold on. it's funny. What if what if I showed up to the skate park wearing soaps and I start just grinding shit by running up to it and being like, "What up? Check out my soaps." Do you see my face right now? <laughs> That's probably what I feel. That's dope. As what fuck, if I was killing? First off. Like you know what I mean? Like I showed up and I was doing some badass fucking tricks just on soaps. And for people playing the home game like Randy who has no idea what we're talking about, soaps are shoes that have little grinding things on the inside of them, like inside your heel, so you can roller blades without wheels. Is basically. Pretty much, you can grind, which is regular shoes. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And then they had wheelie soaps where you had the wheels on the back of them yeah. and you could wheelie into the fucking grind. Those are fun. You know how they have, like, the metal community, right? Yeah. It's like, and if, like, you don't, if you're not playing something that's actually metal music, but you think it is, you get fucking shunned. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That feeling, yeah. You, you, that's like we talked to Brent about the band Ghost. Like, not quite metal, but it's, some of it is, but they fucking hate it. It's like the worst thing in the world. It makes no people. sense to me. Ghost is so good. Yeah, yeah, but that's how the skate. That's the same as the skateboarding community. Like, hey, you could have fucking wheels, but no one likes you. Like, even kids come in. And they, people think your <laughs> kids are annoying as fuck. Like, I've what seen kids get, get laid out and shit. Yeah, exactly. Nerds. Kids are getting laid out. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't have this personally, but that's just the. That's how it is. That's just how it, it is. Anyways, next week, it's Steve's pick, and since it's, we're all musicians here. And the person who's missing, too, is also a musician. I felt like, you know what, it's time for another music-type movie. Uh, Wally, you might know what I'm thinking of. Just say it for me. I do, there's so many good ones, but are, is it, are you talking about what we were talking about earlier? I don't... The, I, the Wedding Singer? talking about anything. No, no. It's one of my favorite movies that came out in the 2000s. Dewey, Dewey Cox. My man right there getting it. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> we're doing Walk Hard next week. Dewey Cox. We're going fucking... I, I love this fucking we're movie. We're getting into <laughs> it. The devil... You know, what, you know what the devil's got? He's got hands. You know what he uses them for? For holding. For holding. <laughs> Listen Randall. to the soundtrack before you watch the movie, Randall. I think that'll no, help you No, 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 no. No, go in blind. <laughs> Randy, have okay. you seen Walk Hard before? No. Okay. So it, there's two versions of the movie. It's and a Johnny I Cash implore you, spoof. Hold on. I implore you to watch the unrated version movie? if you can. No, it's not. It is 
full on autobiography of the best <laughs> fucking man who's ever made music in his life, Dewey Cox. So specifically what it is, it's like so the original one that they're making fun of was a movie about Johnny Cash, right? It was okay. called it was called uh what was it called? See Walk Hard? No, it was what was, uh, was the original one called Walk the Line. The one that Phoenix well, uh, uh Yeah, Walk the Line. Yeah, Walk the Line. So, and it was a serious movie, everyone loved it. But then afterwards they came out with a spoof and it has John C. Riley and it's pretty much just making fun of it. And it's so fucking funny. So but I think it was actually the first actually called? Com- Walk Hard. Walk it's hard, the, Walk du- hard. Okay. the Dewey Cox story. Yeah. Um, okay. It, it, my thing is, it doesn't specifically make <laughs> fun of just one movie. I think it does the trope of every autobiography movie that's come out about oh, yeah. musicians. Yeah, there's yeah, so yeah. many good lines. There's so many good parts in this movie. Like I said, if you can find the unrated version, it adds like 20 minutes to this movie, and it completely changes halfway through it. It's still good if you don't get the unrated version, but there's a scene, and I'm not gonna. I'm not going to first ruin comedy it. movie where say, I saw a, I saw a fucking a a, a, a dick. dick. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I do want to say there's one line that always gets me, and it's not going to ruin it for Randy. But when he's like, <gasps> "Paul's a big fat cunt," like I just lose it every time. <laughs> yeah, Randy's like, "I don't, I don't know. I really ain't I'm, I'm, I'm looking up where to watch it. I'm going to be on your dudes. Plex. It's not on my Plex, but I could. You know what? I'll find. Uh, I'll I'll go look for an unrated version and put it on my Plex. I own yeah, it on yeah. fucking Blu-ray uh, because this movie, when it came out, this was one of my favorite. Still is one of my favorite all time. Just music movies and just of that era when they were churning and burning these type of comedy movies uh, with like Will Ferrell and John C. Riley and like the Step Brothers type movie. There's no way you're not gonna like this Randall because it is in that same genre, same time period, uh, same jokey kind of stupid like you know, quick witted type, uh, joke movie. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorite of that era and we're going to fucking get to it next week and it's going to be fun. I'm in. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. So anyways, I didn't think this was going to be as long as it was talking about a Disney channel original movie, but you know what? It brought out the best of us here at the decision reel for people still listening and watching. Thank you for listening and watching through our giant rambles of, on the rails and off the rails, getting back on reels and putting them up and, you know, doing what we got to do with it. So I I appreciate that. Again, if you want to find us anywhere, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube, at The Decision Reel, our website, www.thedecisionreel.com. We got merch there. Help us out if you want to. Give us a a purchase of a t-shirt that maybe Randy bought today. I don't know. Wally, there's one one up there that's a Metal Gear Solid. I I know, uh, I know. You know, know you want it. It's the metal real song. Oh, my look cheap at you. ass. <laughs> <laughs> I did mine expedited uh, expedited shipping so it gets here before the show on Saturday. Oh, my guy. Look at that. He's going to yeah. wear it to the show. I got one. Maybe I might wear it to the show. I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, again, thanks for, for listening or watching. Uh, we'll look for you next week with Dewey Cox. See ya. Bye. Bye.